up, guys? What Welcome up? to another podcast. You know what? We have been off for a while now. Away for a while. In fact, AFK. In fact, you know what? Uh, I should probably check to see if we're like recording audio. Yeah, good that, point. that's a good point. Let's see. All right. Me, 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 me. Listen. You, 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 you. All right. We're recording audio, man. That's All right. Uh, that is always a good thing when you're doing a podcast. Yeah, if there's the audio, components. if there's audio, otherwise you're just looking through a bu- looking at a bunch of goofballs. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you yeah. could you could probably like you know add them your own thing. Yeah. Fighting Coco. Someone at my family. <laughs> it's not gonna be that fun. Yeah. So man, it's been a it's been a minute. And, it's been a minute since Raya even. Uh, even before Raya, bro. Before yeah, Raya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason is because of Raya. And fasting man. Fasting man. And then Fadil got I sick. I got sick. I got chicken pox. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, man. I thought I got chicken pox when I was a kid. Yeah. Turns out whatever I got was something completely different. Right. And right. this time I got it and my kids got it because I got right. it. Right. Wow. Yeah. Do you know what chicken pox round two is? Uh, apparently it's called uh, ringworm. Eh, ringworm. Shingles. Shingles. Yeah, yeah. Shingles. So what's interesting about shingles that I found out, right, is that if you have shingles, it is... You cannot infect other people with shingles, right? But you can infect other people with chicken pox. Chicken pox. Oh. Yeah, so it's like you you're already like the MLM level two lah, basically, uh, right? Yeah. So if anybody want to master the MLM chicken pox right, MLM, right, right? They cannot come into level two. They gotta go you to already level one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you already double diamond double already. Diamond double diamond, diamond already, diamond. right? Yeah, so if you yeah, want yeah. to be recruited into the chicken pox MLM, you gotta come back uh, entry yeah, level. You know? Junior level uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same awesome. company, That's but <laughs> different level, different right, level. Right, right. That's why uh, I got shingles, right? right. And apparently shingles is, was is super contagious, and I was working in HSBC at the time. Contagious, but contagious for the chickenpox. Correct. Okay. Not contagious for, for shingles. shingles. You can't get shingles. So I went to the first doctor, and the doctor is like, "Shingles is not contagious. You don't need to take leave. Everything is fine." And then I'm just like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, no, no, no worry about it." And he's like, "A lot of people say that you know the shingles. That he believes that people are superstitious that." If it goes around, around your body, one whole ri- one whole ring, yes, you will like cut in half. Like, like say it goes around here, correct. your arm's gonna fall. Correct, off. <laughs> yes, that is what the superstitious belief yeah, for shingles I've is, heard, right? I've heard about this. What's so, the word in Malay? There's a word for this in Malay. It, I I don't know, but I think in Mandarin it it means like snake or something like that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, this um, this uh, so he was saying, yeah, it's fine. And I went to the second doctor. The second doctor is like. This is highly contagious. You can't go to office. <laughs> two weeks, two weeks leave. That's why I realized like, there are a lot of quacks out there. Always yeah. get a second opinion. Like you know when doctors, or third, or, third or fourth. You know that's why a lot of doctors, right? They come and give you information and they'll say, "Well, you know what? I went to medical school and you just googled it, so I think I know better than you." No, you don't. You yeah. quack. That other guy went to medical school, school too. too. <laughs> Apparently that medical school is better than your medical school. Or maybe yeah. you were the you you know who you were? You were me in class. You yes. know what I mean? You I'm were, the guy at the back of the class. You were drawing cartoons, you know, dicking around. Guy, messing around, barely passed, and somehow we're here. The only difference is that I fuck up in my class, I don't infect an entire like data <laughs> center right. with chicken pox. You know, that's the day, that's the difference, yeah. lah, right? You mess up on yeah. <laughs> Exactly. People's lives are in danger. That's what I said lazy kids should never go to medical school, right? That is correct. Because you, you're lazy and you just give half ass diagnosis oh. out there, right? <laughs> the consequence is the diet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be a lazy programmer. Worst thing is your shit doesn't load. You shit know what I mean? doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. <laughs> Nobody's gonna die from that. Yeah, you never heard of anybody dying because JavaScript didn't run. Right, exactly. <laughs> Worst case is you'll just get a. Buy like this website, yeah. <laughs> but, but it never load. <laughs> hey, how come I cannot buy the tickets to Coldplay? Uh, Did you hear about that Coldplay, issue? Yes, yeah, oh my issue. goodness! This is the thing. Do you like yeah. Coldplay? I actually do. I kind of okay. like. I, I don't really like Coldplay. I only like one of their songs, and yeah, that was the combo with oh. Chainsmokers. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. I Something just remember. like this. Something just like this. Okay. That's the only Coldplay song that I like, right? Something I need something just. Yeah, yeah, that one. Been looking for some gold. Like if it, it, it has a and his miss, miss, and his and his gold, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, the lyrics. Is, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spider Man's control no. and Batman with his fist. <laughs> is, is that the real lyric? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have guessed. Uh, okay. Anyway. Um. So yeah. yeah, I never really liked Coldplay, so I wasn't super psyched about it. Right, right, right. But apparently the website crashed like right. humongo. The thing is that. This is not the first time this has happened. Yeah. Websites crashing because too many people are going to it. 
is a everyday phenomenon in Malaysia, right? Yeah, but in this case also, it's the scalpers who cause it to be crashed because the scalpers which I'm bought oh, they on it, mass, it? yeah, they oh. bought it in bulk. Right. And apparently there's somebody selling a ticket for 43,000 yeah, bucks. 43,000 bucks. But the, the, the question that I have, right? Mm. Isn't there any, like, it's not like people don't know that they're scalpers, right? Right, yeah. Every time Malaysia has a problem, they be like, oh, this thing happened. And I'm like, you didn't predict this? Come on. <laughs> like, come on, come on, come on. Right. There's this place right. called the United States of America right. where they have this gun problem. Right, okay. I, I so get, get it. Our, our problems aren't that bad. Our co play scalpers and, you know, right. your children getting murdered in school. Yeah. Two different problems, you know, oh, what, but what, different what, degrees. One yes. good suggestion I kind of heard from people saying is like, uh, when you buy the ticket, mm. you put your IC number, la, then what? Yeah. Uh, you know? I heard that they do do that, but it's like okay, I'm not maybe I'm wrong, but okay. you can buy more than one ticket under your IC number. Oh, I think so. But then there also should be like a how many people are you bringing? Your entire neighborhood? No way, lah, right? You bring your family, your friends, maybe ten people ma- max yeah, per ticket yeah, per person. Yeah, but then yeah, even yeah. then, also scalpers are gonna oh yeah, I'll get and this ten. And there's even I mean I don't know whether this is true because I'm just reading comments, right? And, and you know how reliable I the internet, even inter- read the comments. internet comments are, right? Where they say that there is the IC thing, mm. but they don't actually check at the gate. Uh, because imagine if you bought a 3,000 ringgit, or in this case, 43,000 ringgit <sighs> ticket, right? The IC doesn't match and you're not allowed into the Coldplay concert. This is why you need <laughs> NFT tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, that's true. But then that's going to make scalping even worse, right? Because you're going to anonymously buy uh, and anonymously sell. Yes. It's going to make it even worse. Yeah. But then. You won't be able to make more than like 11 purchases a second or something because Ethereum runs so slow. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be a deterrent. Oh, that's the feature of the Ethereum. The feature. It's, okay. a, it's not a bug, guys. Right. It's a feature. It's a feature. Right, right, right. Or you know what? After all of this, Coplay should just do a second day concert. And then <laughs> like all the scalpers will be like, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, they should do it, and then, like, that, that'll teach the scalpers. Yeah, yeah. Not that I care about Coldplay, right. and then there's so much controversy where people are like, oh, what is Coldplay? What Coldplay tak ada manfaat? <laughs> oh, and, those people are uh, coming out of the woodwork. And those people are coming out of the woodwork, and it's like, you also tak ada manfaat, so why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, this is why I never got, right? Mm. You don't like something. Mm. Don't watch la! Duduk diam, duduk rumah diam diam la, right? Uh, <laughs> why you, I mean, I, I do not like Coldplay. I right. will never go and spend money right. on their concert. Right. There's only one of their songs that I don't mind, and it's because it works in the chain focus. But I'm not going to rip on you for going to a Coldplay and concert. You'll be standing in the streets like, don't go watch Coldplay, it's yes. not good for you. Yes, exactly. Why would you want to waste your time? Yeah, why? Exactly. Actually, who would you go to watch in concert in Malaysia? I went There's very to, few I, bands I, I went I to watch Incubus Incubus Oh yeah. when was this man? I cannot remember again Gotta be like What? Oh, 20 wow. years ago? Oh, no 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 no. <laughs> Actually they came like Maybe 10 years ago 10 years ago Incubus uh, really? Okay. Incubus yeah Okay okay Are you so, a big Incubus fan? Uh, uh, not to say big Incubus fan I mean I'm Like I said yeah. before I'm not a big fan of any one particular right, band right, But right. yeah I kind of listen to a lot of Incubus Right right when I was in tracks, we got quite a bit of tickets to go and view some of the shows. No. But it's always on a day that I can't go. Ah. So I think I could have gone and watched LMFAO when they were here. That was oh. my last chance to go watch a concert. So right. that's got to be like 2011 or something like that. But the last concert that I went to, I think, was in 2004, I think, mm-hmm. Lincoln Park. That was the Meteora tour. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that was the Lincoln last Park. concert I went to. And the concert before that was... Michael Lenz the Rock <laughs> in the in, 90s wait a m- oh in the 90s in the 90s oh. in you know where Stadium where? Likas oh yeah. speaking of Michael Lenz the Rock it reminded me of Richard Clayderman I actually okay. did an intro for Richard Clayderman when he oh, came to KL oh okay okay wow, that was pretty, pretty cool like, they paid me like yeah. 3,000 bucks oh, just wow. to say one line oh awesome, awesome. <laughs> I was like yeah. ladies and gentlemen welcome right. to whatever whatever featuring Richard Clayderman right and then, I think it was Richard Clayton right now. I can't remember. But right. they paid me three grand for just saying that live. Right, right. And it doesn't even matter whether you mispronounced it wrong or whatever. Probably what? <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, so exactly. I <laughs> and then I just went That's there. the best. No retakes. Set the line and then chow. <laughs> right, wow, right, right, that right, was right. a good yeah. gig. Yeah, was Let good. me tell you. That is a really good gig. Most people got to MC for like one whole day to get that. <laughs> oh, yeah, <wow>. exactly. <laughs> 
So anyway, welcome to the podcast. We talk about movies. Ah, sometimes, um, yes. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> you, there's a lot of stuff that has happened. We're yes. just gonna go through some uh, quick fire stuff. Yeah. Um. So we did. Uh, we we wanted to talk about the MH370. Yes. Um. Documentary that came out. Uh, I think it was big deal when it came out. It's called a. MH370 something, something Netflix Yeah, no M- the, this, MH370 Disappearance um, Macam tu lah Netflix. Ada MH370 lah Dalam the name, right? You know what? Okay lah They got the internet here <laughs> then. Alang-alang We just go and check MH370. I don't know why Sometimes we like to play Like hard mode Don't use MH370, Google MH370 <laughs> Is it the No, MH370 Netflix The right? final The missing The plane The that plane disappeared. that disappeared Right Right, yeah So that that was pretty interesting We We I think there's some uh, What's the word for it When you have a, a theory That's really wild conspiracy. A conspiracy theory Conspiracy theory So right. many conspiracy theories Around it Okay so what's your Conspiracy theory Because uh, I think I know What happened to MH370 Oh yeah yeah, yeah. You, uh, Shaz actually went into A, a very detailed explanation yeah. As to what exactly happened And why It could not have happened Any other way Yes Sim- Okay the way that Shaz put it is Alright let's hear it Okay the way that Shaz put it is He doesn't have The details of the picture Right But he does have a framing for it, which sets the entire uh, 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 situation. Right. And because of the framing of it, it can only have happened in certain ways. As in, yes. because of uh, certain situations, certain uh, evidence, it could not have happened any other way. So he's, he's got a g- solid frame, right. but we're a little unclear of the details. Correct. Shots. Which basically means that the story is somewhere in this picture. Yes. Right? I don't know what exactly the picture is. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're trying to put, you, you connect all the outlines. So the picture is somewhere in the middle, but I don't know what the actual yeah, yeah. arrangement of the pieces are, right? Yeah. Okay, so, because there were three theories, right? One is that pilot suicide. That yes. was theory number one. Uh, theory number two was that it was hijacked. Ah, uh, yes. It was hijacked. And theory number three was that it was shot down. Oh, yes, by Russia. The intercept. No, by America. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, it was shot down, right? Okay, so all of these three things obviously doesn't make any sense. Pi- pilot suicide was kind of like, there's a couple of questions with that pilot suicide, which is what I think the prevailing theory is right now, right? It is pilot suicide because that's the most likely thing. Because the other two, hijack and uh, shot in, sh- the shot down one was the most ridiculous one because if it was shot down, there'd be debris everywhere, everywhere right. and you'd be able to see it, right? Um, the hijacking thing was that they said that the hijackers flew the plane from the underground like inside the the data area of oh the plane, right right the, with, the one right outside the cockpit there's a little thing under the yes, carpet right correct yeah. so that doesn't make any sense because you can't actually fly a plane from you there you cannot right? you can only read those two or three particular readings that's about it you cannot me- mechanically maneuver the plane yeah. from inside that yes uh, location correct and the, the first one is pilot suicide now pilot suicide for me um, the, the, is, there's still a lot of strange things about it it's just that it's the least amount of problems right pilot suicide is that there's three things on the plane that turns off right it is the uh, transponder the AWACS AWACS, and the immersat right okay so it says good night Malaysia and it hands over to To Vietnamese airspace airspace, these three things turn off okay and then he makes a u-turn he sort of like threads the needle between uh, Thailand and Malaysia Malaysia, right? right because hopefully Thailand will think it's a Malaysian plane and Malaysia will think it's a Thai plane right And then after when it gets to the Straits of Malacca, it straight goes up, and then it goes around the Sumatra into yeah. the Indian Ocean. Indian correct. Ocean, all okay. The way south, right. So when it goes past Sumatra, that's when suddenly the Immerset turns on, yeah. and that's only when the Immerset. Only the Immerset. So the transponder and the ACARS is off. Yeah. Right. So that's very strange because if let's say for example you were to uh, dis, so you can apparently, I'm sure pilots can correct me if I'm wrong. You can turn off the. Uh, transponder Transponder You can turn off the ACARS From, from the, cockpit. the cockpit But the Immerset specifically Needs to be turned off From the uh, con- Some kind of like Circuit breaker You got to pull Pull Under Which is it, outside of the cockpit Outside of the cockpit correct. Under some carpets You have to open up a hatch And go yes. down there So it's not like you can just Oh simply go reach over And flip it off You got to yes. actually go out And people are going to see you Etc etc Correct Correct So it's not a simple thing For you right. to do it, It's not just that It's time consuming Time consuming right? yeah. Time consuming Right So why would you, if let's say you've already done that, why then, would you turn it back on? And then after the go and turn it back on again, yeah. what was the, what's the point of that, yeah, right? Joke, kita kasi balik. Yes. But ex- why? What? What's the reason, right? So there's some questions with pilot suicide. Okay? Okay. So this is my this is my explanation. And also right? if it was pilot suicide, if this pilot already died, 
how are you going to turn it on? Yeah, I, I mean, let's say he he wanted to kill himself and he flew uh, a, 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 a autopilot all the way, whatever. Okay, that's there's a possibility there, but right. there's some pieces that don't match, right? right? right. And um, the the thing is also um, the pilot doing this pilot suicide most of the time is the pilot immediately crashes the plane. Right. Why? Why go all go the way down to the southern? So strange, yeah. So anyway. Um, this is my explanation, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take bits and pieces of this documentary. One was the French guy who said that there were AWACS planes in the vicinity who, and they said that the Americans were involved in it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say what he's saying is true, but what happened is incorrect, which is what they're saying is that it went up to Russia or something like that, and like that, there's no evidence to support any of that, right? Mm -hmm. Because let's assume that it did crash in the Indian Ocean, the Immersat data is correct, uh, they found the debris that is from MH370. Sure. The plane took all of that path and everything. So what makes sense to me, right? And it's another thing. So let, it's very important to know that none of, nobody has discussed this. When supposedly, they said that he killed all the people by asphyxiating them, sure, right? Sure, yeah. When did, they when did he specifically asphyxiate them? Mm -hmm. Because in order to kill everyone in the passenger, right? You need to turn off the oxygen. And then after you that, you need to lower the pressure in the cabin. Yes, you gotta you gotta like decompress the cabin, decompress right? Decompress the cabin. Right. Now, what you cannot control is the face mask thing falling down. That thing yes. automatically falls the yes. minute you have decompression in the cabin. Correct, and the pilot cannot stop that. So they've got another like what 10, 15 minutes on that. I'm not sure. Let's say it's five minutes, right? Right. So within that five minutes, it's very unlikely that all passengers would not have taken out their phone and tried to message someone or whatever, right? And we do know that a cell tower did ping one of the phones on the plane when it went around to Sarawak, right? right? Uh, from to, uh, to Penang, sorry. Right, right. In so, between Thailand and Malaysia, So Asia, right? if the thing did drop and they put it on their face and they, they messaged someone and then they died after that, the ping would have gone through. Right. Eventually, it would have pinged some in, in the Penang uh, tower, right? But not, none, no contact at, at all from anyone, right? So... There is also about one and a half minutes from the time where he said, this is all, you can go and check this information, okay? One and a half minutes before the time where he said, good night, Malaysia, and the plane making that U-turn is one and a half minutes. So if he had killed people before that, people would have messaged already, right? So if he didn't kill people before that, um, that means that he's, he tells people like, oh, okay, um, good night, Malaysia, and then he kills people, he wouldn't have time, have time to decompress the cabin, wait for everybody to die, and then make the U-turn. In fact, let's say he did it, he killed people after that, right? He would still need to um, say good night, Malaysia, leave the cockpit, go into the first class, open the, the latch, go into the avionics bay. That's what it's called. Avionics, avionics bay. bay. Right, right, right. Pull the circuit breaker and then go back up into the cockpit. At which point, one of the students yeah. said, Captain, <laughs> Captain, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So it's very important to determine, I think, when people actually uh, supposedly died on this flight, if the captain did asphyxiate them, right. right? So I think that does not make sense. What I think could make sense is AWACS planes came in, immediately jammed all signals from the plane. Right after the goodnight. Right after the goodnight, maybe they were monitoring the calls. Uh, they, they immediately jammed all signals from the plane. No phone, nothing can go through. At that point in time, they already had hijackers on the plane, which went in and overpowered the captain. Mm -hmm. Okay, overpowered the captain or whatever, took over the plane. They made the U-turn. AWACS plane is following them the whole way. Okay, now they have the time to decompress the cabin and kill everyone. And if anybody was messaging, which they probably would have done, yeah, the AWACS would have jammed all the signals. Yes. nothing's going out. Nothing's going out. Right. So they would have jammed it all the way to up. The to well, the top Sumatra. of Sumatra, and then the AWACS flies off. Yeah. And at that point, whoever's piloting the plane knows to turn off the ACARS and the transponder. Mm. But the Immersat is not meant to be a tracking software. That's in the avionics bay. Nobody went to the avionics bay, basically. basically. The whole Immersat was not turned off by the avio uh, avionics bay. It was jammed by an AWACS plane or something else that's jamming. Maybe let's right. not say it's an AWACS for sure. Let's it could something be else. something on the on could board something that hijackers on the, on the plane. I don't, I don't know what kind of technology you have. Some EMP or whatever. I don't know what kind of technology people have that can jam signals, but whatever it is, it turned off when it went off the north of Sumatra and the person who's piloting the plane didn't know that this thing is tra transmitting. 
So then they f- it flies down south and then you never find it. Now why? Right. Right. So the question, the, uh, my theory is the same reason why mobsters, you know, wrap people with bricks and throw them into a lake, or like right. rub a gun and throw it into the ocean, or why Dexter buries bodies off his boat. <laughs> yes, is hide the evidence. Hide the evidence. Yeah. So somebody did something fucked up. Yep. And they've dumped it. They've thrown it into like they've thrown a gun into the lake. Basically, they've thrown this plane as far away as possible so that nobody will ever find it by design. There's a reason why we haven't found it. It's because by design, it's meant to be hidden. Not found. Yes. So that's my theory. Right. Somebody did not want something or someone on that plane to land. They got rid of it. And that's what happened to MH370. I yeah. think that answers all the questions. And, and it kind of gels with the fact that they said there was some kind of weird technology brought in by the Chinese or something on board that plane and yeah. on that day. Yeah. On that yeah. Plane. yeah. I mean, why? I don't know. Who? Not sure. Not sure. How exactly? I don't know, but it's in this frame. I think this frame answers all the questions. Right. Right? right. That's, that's my theory. All right. Fair enough. Fair anyway, enough. Anyway. Move on to the next topic. What's okay, the next topic? Okay, okay. Last of Us. We were talking about Last of Us. Last of Us. Did you see the ending? Did you watch the show? No, I did not. Oh my goodness. Okay. Is it still on Netflix? Will it no, it's not on it? Netflix. It's, oh, it's, it's on, on those... HBO. Ah, right. Arr. Arr. You need to be. <laughs> you need to be of the inclined yes. to watch a show like this. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you have to be a bit more entrepreneurial, yeah. as they say. Yeah. So yeah, um, the Last of Us. So uh, I, I think if you if you not played the game as well, right? No, I have not. Okay, so my opinion is, um, I think that if you played the game and then watched the show, it, the fan base it might be split in two. Okay. Right. Those who say uh, watch the game first and then play uh, mm. the show, or some people say watch the show first yeah. and then play. Yeah. So a lot of people they like. Uh, so I, I feel that video games is a very different medium from books. Yes. Okay? Because video game is too similar to TV shows and movies already. It's too similar. If you have the exact words from the video game copy and pasted into a TV show, for me, it removes me from the world. It breaks the fourth wall. Like, ah, I know word for word what this person is going to say already. This world is not real. Oh, yeah, it's based on a video game. So that's, that's me. But I know a lot of fans, they like if it's word for word source material. That's right? not how she said it. Yes. Somebody's going to make noise on the internet. I, exactly, right? Yeah. So I think that for books, for comic books, for anything that is not a video game. I, and, mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, again, video game possible as long as it's not a narrative-based video game. This yeah. is a narrative-based video game where they're basically copy-pasting from what happened in mocap into live action, right? And there were some performances I felt. The mocap was better than the live performance. Oh, okay, like okay. The, 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 the confusion or like... There, there's some parts where the live performance gets it better and some parts where the mocap gets it better. But I expect you to get it all better right. if it's live. That's my opinion. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, game is also... There's a lot more action in the game, obviously, but they got to like streamline it a little bit in the, yeah. uh, in the TV but show. But then what you said kind of reminds me of this tweet I saw recently. Okay. Somebody was talking about a game or whatever, mm. but instead of saying, play this game, he said, play this story. And I thought, yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's kind of what's happening. You're right. not really playing a game where you're, right. you're just sort of interacting in a story. Right, right, of. right. What's, this, what's the game? I can't, I can't remember, remember, but okay. one of those, one of those which I'm big open world right, right, right. okay okay fair enough uh, yeah and there's one other thing about uh, the last of us right mm-hmm. okay so um i think that uh, i don't know whether people are going to come back and look at this podcast 10 years from late, 10 years from now when i'm going to be hosting the oscars and it's going to come back and bite me but i feel that uh there is an lgbtq box that they are trying to pick mm-hmm. Oh, right? this, this, this show? This, this show, right? <laughs> and the thing is, I'm all for LGBTQ <laughs> characters. L- sorry, my apologies. LGBTQIAA+. Oh. oh, right, right, right. Yeah, because okay, people get upset when you don't give the all alphabet the alphabets. Crew. All the alphabets. <laughs> yes. Right? The alphabet mafia come for you, the right? The alphabet mafia coming for you. So, um, <clears throat> the thing is that they only deviated from the story once, which was to explore the relationship between the two gay guys. So, um, Frank and Bill, I think that's what they're called, right? So, in the story, yes, uh, I think it's uh, Bill, I think, the main guy. Um, he, they, it's insinuated that he's gay, but they don't specifically talk about it. The character's slightly different, okay. right? Um, but 
I thought it was interesting how they deviated from that story. Uh, I got to admit, it is still a little bit jarring to see two really hairy dudes make out with each other. Like, it's like, oh, I've never seen that before. Wait a minute. <laughs> Haven't we seen that in Game of Thrones? Two hairy dudes? No. Like, all the gay guys that I've seen kiss each other on screen now. It's going to be one that's hairy and one that's not. Well, like one with the superly chin chest yes. and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, it's that. Game of Thrones, it was that... The the king or margin what's the, the 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 king that got killed by the the shadow shadow creature. Fudge bucket. Yeah, but he was he had a beard right. and his boyfriend did not. Right, right, fair yeah, enough. That's the contrast, I guess. Right. So it's like two burly hairy dudes. It's like oh, that's I've never seen that one before. Okay. Right. Anyway, <laughs> deviating slightly. Uh, okay. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just that I've never seen that before. You know. Yes, right. <laughs> so, but. Uh, this is what I feel, right? If you're going to tangent off into that story, right. I was eager to see more tangents after that because he said that you're going to tangent off, we can make it better. Neil Druckmann, right? right. The director right. and creator of the video game and also director of the movie. What uh, is that you say? That was the one and only That was only the one and tangent. only time where they went off tangent. Oh. They should have went off tangent for the brothers. The, there's two black uh, brothers. You about yeah. This, yeah. The two black brothers. That were, they should have gone on tangent for that. They should have gone off tangent a little bit, I think, for the end when, um, let's see, when uh, they were approaching the Firefly base, um, I think there, there could have been a lot of other, oh no, they should have gone off tangent with the, the cult. The cult. The cult, yeah. I think they could have uh, explored that a little bit more. So if you're going to go off tangent with one story, you got to do at least three. Okay. You know, it, is this it, like a minimal requirement? It's a minimal requirement. Like you do two, it's like, okay, maybe. You do three, okay, that was their theme. Uh, you do one, it seems like it's an agenda. Kenapa ni tiba-tiba? Just one. Uh, okay, you, know yeah, I mean? you got a point. Right. You just do one, like, why, why, why that particular? Why that one, yes. So that's the, that's the thing that's a little bit strange. But yeah, mm. besides that, I think it's an interesting show. Just that Last of Us 2 is going to take place, like, I think, 10 years afterwards. What? You mean they're going to have a second season, Last the, the of Us game, 2? The game. Oh, the game, right. So the second season, they're not going to wait 10 years. They're not going to wait for... They're not going to recast Ellie, right? right. They're not going to recast her. So they're probably going to like fill in after this, which I would actually look forward to more because oh. that means that I'm getting more story. I don't know. When you say that, right, mm. it brought me like Naruto flashbacks, man. <laughs> filler. Right. Non-stop filler. Like, what is right. this story? Right. It's, true. it's true. Especially... Chilaka, me Naruto. Then it becomes like a prequel because you know what's going to happen, yeah, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, The Last of Us, I think uh, uh, it, it's a good show, but I, I'm not sure whether it has legs. And I feel like sometimes it's chicken checking um, boxes and shows that check boxes usually don't 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 work, don't work. yeah 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 okay yeah so i also saw this uh, alternate casting thing right where they cast uh, different people for um the particular roles and i and i thought it was interesting because they they chose uh, Oberyn Martell, right? Um, uh, Oberyn Martell. Uh, right um what's his name Mandalorian uh, yeah yeah um Pascal. Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal, yeah. They cast Pedro Pascal as Joel, right? Right. But somebody said it would have been better if they had cast um, Nicholas Costa Wilder, I think his name, Walder. Oh, um, um, Jamie Lannister. Yes. Jamie man, Lannister. Yeah, yeah. It, it would have been better if they had casted him. He has a really? more like... Because the character, Joel, kind of like loses it. Uh, he goes like uh, mad, right. basically, right? Like, he kind of like... All the trauma gets to him like massive PTSD and he can't fucking take it anymore. But didn't right? they take this Pedro Pascal because he looks almost exactly like the similar? Dude? They yeah. definitely look similar. But yeah. you know what? You slap a thick beard on most people would probably look like that. You know, <laughs> most, white guy with a thick beard. You know, like yeah. it would probably is similar. But would I'm not saying Pedro Pascal did a bad job. He's an, obviously an amazing actor. Right. But that was an interesting choice. Uh, and uh, Pedro Pascal is already in too many things. I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's too he's like everywhere. He's everywhere. Pedro Pascal is everywhere, man, you know? I think they just uh, put him in a new show that's coming up. Girl. What the heck is it called? He was in the he was in the Nicolas Cage movie as well. Nicolas Cage movie, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. saw that one. I mean, yeah. I want to see that one. I haven't yeah. yet. The enormous weight of massive talent. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's the other movie that I want to talk about. Redfield. Ooh. Renfield? Yeah, Renfield. Oh, Renfield, the, the vampire one. Have you seen it I've already? Seen it. I've seen it, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, man, I haven't yet. Uh, yeah, it yeah. features everybody's favorite actor in the world. Yeah. Nicholas, Mr. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage as Dracula. 
Yes, you can win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, Renfield is his. Uh, he's like control, control, basically. He's, oh. His minion. His minion, right? Uh. So he's supposed to like help Dracula recover, and then Renfield doesn't really drink blood. He eats bugs. Hey, wait. Nicholas Cage is Renfield. Nicholas Cage is Dracula. He's Dracula. Gotcha. Renfield is Nicholas Holt. The other, he's like uh, his minion. His minion. Holt? His henchman. His minion. Yeah, uh, I mean, where, where uh, is he his from? Beast, beast from. Ah, uh, beast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's trying to see whether he wants to break up with Dracula or not. Uh, it is uh, one of those like comedy action movies, turn your brain off kind right, of nonsense. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? basically. <laughs> he, wants, he wants to break up He's uh, like in an abusive relationship And he wants to break up yeah. okay, 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 okay. I see, I see. I, It's one of those movies Where it's sort of like <laughs> Like my, my wife saw it And she's like What stupid movie Are you watching And then after watch She's like Nicolas Cage is in this <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so she's like Her first impression is like This is a stupid movie And then she's like What the hell is Nicolas Cage in this movie I think that applies to a lot of Nicolas Cage <laughs> yeah, movies exactly. Like if you go in not knowing what it is Like yeah. what the hell kind of movie is it? Wait a minute! This, it's I a Nicholas Cage movie. Wait a minute! I know that guy. <laughs> uh, exactly. So that's the that's the the gist of Renfield. I think. Renfield. Huh? It's yeah. on. It's a movie. It's ah, not on anything. We'll go watch it in the cinema. Yes, of course you will, because there's nowhere else. Unfortunately, you yeah, if you yeah, want to watch yeah. a movie, you gotta go do it the right way, boys. Yeah, yeah. So you said that you watched Beef, right? Le Bouf, Le yeah, Bouf. very good. Ah, right. uh, co- uh, it's a American Korean punya yep. uh, thingy magic, but. At one point, I was like, hey, Ali this Wong one? and Steven Yuan. Uh, Ali Wong and Steven? Yuan. Yuan. Who apparently uh, got uh, won uh, Oscar? Not Oscar, one of those TV things. Emmy. Emmy things, yes. Oh, okay. For one of his scenes. I don't know if he won, but he was. Uh, What's the word for it? Nominated. Nominated for it. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, Fadil. Right. Help Thank me complete you your much. words. <laughs> yes. So he was nominated for an Emmy for one of the scenes, the one in the church, which is really good. Okay. And uh, at one point of the show, right, I'm like, hey, this show got to be freaking Korean director, right? And right. then, and in one of the shows where it supposedly ended, but it didn't end yet, they right. said, directed by, and it's like, hey, it's a Korean guy. Right, right, right. And I was like, yeah, because the, you remember that part where the... The girl was doing flashbacks to right, her right. abusive mom. Right. Suddenly got Korean jump scare, Chilaka. Right, right. right. <laughs> not really jump scare, la, right, because right. It, it was not so right. super gory or scary. But this, I thought, like, this, this is Korean style movie. La, right, 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 right. It's what she sees her yeah, stepmom yeah. as. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. So How she perceives the stepmom. How she perceives the stepmom without, yeah. without spoiling anything. But yeah. whoa, at that point, and from that point, I saw, like, hey, then I noticed a few other things that were like, this is super Korean style movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it was really good. I liked yeah, it. Show, yeah. It's one of those shows where you binge watch. It's not like, oh, I'll watch one, I'll watch another one in two nah, days' time. Yeah, no, no, no. You binge you, watch it. You want to you wanna find out what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of Korean movie like that, this one is like about two people who are having beef. Okay. They're trying to much, um, get back at each other yeah. and eventually they sort of learn life lessons and these kind of things, yeah. right? Ego, depression. Ego, depression. There's, there's a lot of like um, yeah. deeper meaning to all of it. Yeah. It's in a very arts... I feel it's very artsy. It's a Especially very artsy that, uh, kind of show. Toward the last episodes, two or three last episodes, it's super artsy. Yeah, yeah. And oh, this is one thing I, I gotta say. Um, mm. I am surprised that Ali Wong has mm. is actually a really good actress. Because yeah, not bad. Not because bad a lot of stand up comics when they go into acting, right? You kind of wonder are they here because of their comedy reasons? But Ali's actually got a decent range of emotion, you know, angry, really sad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got a point. She's pretty good. After that I watched another Korean film. This is actually Korean la. It's called The Glory. Oh my right. goodness. If you like these kind of oh. vengeance kind of stories, huh? Okay. Fula lay. This one lays it on like Wow, slow burn all the way to the end, and the people that she takes vengeance on, you really like. Oh wow! Oh, Cristiano this is people. okay. You know what? Uh. I saw a trailer for a show, uh. which is about a a, a bathroom. Mm-hmm. In the bathroom, there is a glory hole. Okay. Oh. And in that, but that glory hole is like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> What? Yes. <laughs> and this is not porn. This is not porn. This is a st- it's like a horror movie. Called The Glory Hole? Oh, hold on, huh? Let, let me try and find it. Okay. You gotta be shitting me. What is this now? Okay. 
Larry Hall Monster. Uh, Monster Club. Oh, that's our next video. That, 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 is, that actually <laughs> is porn. Uh, Larry Hall. Actually, your first five uh, kids are all porn. porn. It's all porn. <laughs> <laughs> Not the right Larry words Hall to be Monster looking for. Um, trailer movie. That's right. Bloody disgusting. Shutters. Glorious trailer. Is that the one? J.K. Simmons. Hey, I think it's called K. Glorious. Yeah, it's called Glorious. J.K. Simmons, the 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 the, the, the Jaina Jemison. Yes. Oh, oh this is it. Yeah, it's called Glorious. West. Correct. Calling you again. I just needed to hear your voice. I love you very much. I think like his family dies or something like that. Shutter. Have you ever seen anything by these shutter you know, people? Some things may seem broken. Usually just means you stop trying. Everything all right over there, my friend? I'm not much of a bathroom talker. You're not in the least bit curious as to what I have to say. I'm just not into conversations with random dudes hiding out in bathroom stalls. <laughs> No one is coming to help you, friend. Anybody! So you're a god living in a rest stop bathroom in a stall that's glory hole adjacent. <laughs> I am he. I am that god. The universe has a favor to ask. You need to satisfy my physical form. <laughs> There's only one part of you that can do that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> People are safe. Total annihilation of all life. I get in the some virtual right? Your feelings but they're tear you up Simmons. inside. Yeah. Pure and raw. That's what I need from you. What did you do, Wes? That wouldn't have helped. Why? Is there a Would troll you living in that one? You're digging a hole with some random monster. I'd be like, bye bye, universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> oh, you boy. chose the wrong hero. <laughs> yeah, it's called Glorious. Yeah. Oh so, wow. This sounds like a Fadil film, doesn't it? It somewhat does. Right. <laughs> Glorious. Okay. Glorious. Yeah. Because you mentioned that, and then that's what I thought you were going to talk about. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, no. This so I was like, wait a minute. Is this, is this Korean? It's like, oh, no, it's not. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Beef, and if you really like this mm -hmm. vengeance stuff, watch The Glory, right? which is on Netflix. And then we'll all go and check out Glorious. Glorious. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? You'll be sharing the thingy on the, the this. You'll play the video later. Like yes, I will. I'll, it'll be like in the bottom corner somewhere okay. here, okay. here or something like this. Somewhere uh, here, I see. Yeah, okay. Maybe something okay. like that. Yeah. So anyway, um, other stuff that I've watched recently is Picard season three. So have you, have you watched Picard at all? Uh, no. I came in today to see you watching Voyager. Voyager. So it's because of Picard season three. Picard. So. Is yeah. this the one that you said to me was very good in the sense that there, there were two, right? There's two Star Treks right now out at yes. the same time. Yes. One of which is really dumb and much like forcefully LGBTQ plus or something like that. No, no. So it's the, technically there's three, I guess. Oh, okay. There's the Discovery, um, there's uh, Strange New Worlds okay. and Picard. Okay. Okay. Strange New Worlds is really good. Okay. Okay. Um, very old school Star Trek but with a new twist there's one or two episodes that's kind of campy okay. that, that a lot actually all Star Trek has classic, camp has that campy yeah. kind of episode right yeah. it's not Star Trek without a little camp Come yeah on. that's just just the formula of Star right. Trek right? right so for me I don't really like the campy elements of Star Trek even sure. though that's what it is right it's there for the fans the it's, die it's hard there, fans it's there to complete the show basically yeah, right. you know where like right. Data suddenly becomes Sherlock Holmes or whatever or fair yeah. enough <laughs> <laughs> and then um um, you've got uh, Discovery. Discovery was somewhat watchable in season two, but that was it. Like, how many I, seasons it got? I think it's got like season. F I think it's f season five. But you didn't go past two. Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, I watched season one be just to sort of like complete my Star Trek ratio thing. And <laughs> no, the, I watched season one simply because of Michelle Yeoh. Because I fucking oh, love Michelle Yeoh. Michelle Yeoh is like one of the Starfleet captains. Michelle Yeoh is a Starfleet captain. It's like if you're a Malaysian and you're a Trek fan, you need to watch it. You yeah, know what I mean? Right, like right. it's like blasphemous. They're gonna come to your house and uh, you know, 
revoke your nerd card if you don't, right? <laughs> yeah. Your Malaysian nerd card, take it. Yeah. Um, but I did not like the rest of it. Um, and uh, yeah, Saving Jules is good. Picard season one was bad. Really? So yeah, so I'm not I'm not shitting on like the woke Star Trek. Okay, you got good writing or watch it, right? Mm-hmm. Because season two was better, mm-hmm. but towards the end it got kind of bad. I felt. Oh, okay. But three. Because season three for me is a nostalgia fest to the max. So it's all just throwing nostalgia. Remember this? Remember this? Remember? And then you're like, oh, I remember. I remember. Member Barry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, I remember what it's like. So. so basically, it's like, oh, we messed up season two. Let's 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 give them a little juice, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's it's all the original like SDNG cast, with the exception of uh, Wesley Crusher. I do not know who that is. Uh, Beverly Crusher's son. Uh, um, he was the villain in the Big Bang Theory. What's his name? Um, Big Bang Theory had a uh, villain. I mean, Sheldon's enemy. Um, oh, the other scientist guy. No, no, he was, wait, he, he plays himself. Girl. Wesley Crusher's played. Oh man, it's gonna bug me now. I know his name. Oh, uh, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Oh, yeah. Firefly fame. No, no, no. That's that's Will. That's. Uh, <laughs> I know who. Josh you're Whedon. That's Josh Whedon. Yes. Sorry about it's that. Will Wheaton. Yeah, it's different. And Sheldon will scream, Wheaton! Uh, like at the end of the, every episode. Okay. Yeah. And, and Will Wheaton is like an asshole in The Big Bang right. Theory. I thought it was such a brilliant character for him. Really? Like he just plays an asshole, you know? <laughs> he just like foils all of Sheldon's plans. What if he's like that other guy, uh, that comedian? Maybe he's just being himself in real life? Maybe, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not sure, right? right, but right, right. Will Wheaton seems very left leaning, so I don't think so. Okay, okay. You know, he seems like one of those like hippie types, so uh, I don't know. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, this uh, this start this episode it had a lot of nostalgia throwbacks and stuff like that. They did they, there was a new cast that they introduced in season one. Less of them were in season two, I believe. And then like season three, there was only like one, I think one that was like brought over. Everyone else was not there anymore. Wow, but then that means you're a pretty diehard trekkila because man, you some go watch a whole season of shit. <laughs> and still go back <laughs> so it is the thing right I watched okay so I didn't really watch season 1 that much okay season 1 I tried to watch like 2 or 3 episodes I couldn't take it but season 2 I watched it um, because there was a clip that I saw online of the mm-hmm. Borg Queen uh, in like in stasis or something and they oh. were talking to the Borg Queen about something and I was like oh okay I don't mind watching me some Borg right so I go and watch season 2 so season 2 was kind of interesting though the only thing is that what happened in season 2 should be somewhat connected to what's happened in season three. No. But it's almost like two separate stories. Retconning to the back. Yeah, it's like, did season two happen? I'm not even 100% sure right Right. now. What they're saying is that, no, no, what happened in season two did happen. He says that. But we're just not talking about it. We're just not talking about it. (laughs) We're just not, exactly. We're just not talking about it. And you're like, that's strange because season two, Borg related. Season three, Borg Borg related. related. And like, you never mention. You remember that thing that happened with the Borg thing? Maybe we should check that out. No, no one ever mentions it. So that's the only thing. Okay. But season uh, Picard season three is good, but I think we the, it's it's being tapered a, a lot of it is being tapered tapered over with nostalgia. Uh, oh yeah, they get all my favorite SDNG yeah, characters yeah. back. They want to make sure you come back for the next season where they're gonna introduce some more bullshit probably. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Okay, guys, now we got them. Now we can try that funny thing you wanted to do. Or right, whatever. right. Uh, I, I happen to see a tweet. I don't know if I'm correctly sure. reading it or thinking, but Battlestar Scarlactica also oh. have got a coming back. Uh, I was be su- I, I've been reading that for years. But, really? Uh, Stargate also apparently going to be rebooted. Battlestar going to be rebooted, but uh, I haven't. I haven't seen anything specific. Nothing. I just saw a tweet where there's something was like, uh, um, they had a picture of all the Battlestar people. Yeah. And so that's the one with the all. with the six of nine, right? No, no, that's that's Star Trek. Seven of nine. Seven of nine. That's Star Trek. Ah, uh, no, no, no. The the lady in the red dress in the, the the Borg, the cyborg. She's not Borg. She's Cylon. Cylon, yes. Yeah. Cylon. Yeah. So there's a picture of the Last Supper. Right. Tapi macam all the cast of Battlestar Galactica, and they were saying something right. like. They're coming back, guys. I wouldn't mind uh, watching uh, something like that. But I don't know what the hell it was. As usual, I just saw the tweet. I'm like, oh, whatever. So Battlestar Galactica, my opinion, right, mm. is that it is the... What I used, what I called it back in 2004, 
because I thought it was a cool thing to say, right? right. Was it's the Britney Spears of sci-fi, which uh, is that we're watching it, but for all the wrong reasons. I see. <laughs> so okay. many hot people in the show. So many hot people. Right. And I was really into the Korean girl. I can't remember what her name is. Grace Park. Grace Park. Oh. Yeah. I was really into the Korean girl, and she had a sex scene in it, and I was kind of like, why did you censor it? Because apparently in the, se- in the sex scene, she was moaning a lot and they had to censor it. And I'm like, why did you censor it? You should have just released it, okay? Right. So that I would have Release material. <laughs> so that I would have material. Right. And then um, there was a scene where she was going to be raped. Oh, wow. Right. And oh, wow. definitely do not condone rape. That's not, not, not cool, right? So, but the, that scene um, was... Um, was talking a lot about um, consents. No, it's, it's talking a lot about how we dehumanize people. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So, and I do think her character was the most interesting because her character in Battlestar was a Cylon who did not want to be a Cylon. So she thought she was human, but she didn't know she's actually a Cylon sleeper agent. So she's slowly like coming to terms with um, the fact that she's not a real shit, girl. Maybe I'm the saboteur, you know. Maybe I'm the the Cylon, you know. So she's slowly coming to terms with it. And uh, I think if you watch uh, what is that show, the the claymation thing, um, Robot Chicken, Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken. Yeah. There's an episode where they like at the end of Battlestar Galactica, it's just you're a Cylon and then you're a Cylon and you're a Cylon. And he's like, yeah, that's exactly how it seems. Just like you know, the writer strike happened sometime around that time. Oh, right. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like the moment the writer strike happened, there was a bit of a delay. When it came back, it was all rubbish. Uh, yeah. Like Battlestar Galactica, like very good season one. Halfway through season two was really good, and then it just like rubbish. After yeah, that, yeah, yeah. unwatchable yeah. trash. And it's going to be happening soon too because there's a writer's strike happening right now oh, which yeah, means yeah, yeah. anything that's been written right now and apparently the studios are trying to use AI to write stories. Right. So you're going to see a lot of crap for the next year, I think. Jim walks through the door. Jim says, Hi, everyone. Have you seen the weather out there? Laugh trap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty much every episode of The Big Bang Theory after right. season six anyway. So, yeah. 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 So, the yeah. Writers are very important. Oh, Grace Park. This is right here. Trisha Helfer. Ah, uh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Battlestar Galactica reboot. Huh? Yeah, you got that. Try see. Ah, then reboot 2023. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Why the new Battlestar came on the heels of that? What is this? Upcoming series. No, doesn't seem to have anything solid, Boon. Yeah, maybe it's a maybe, maybe kind of thing. I heard that Firefly is going to be rebooted. Stargate's gonna be rebooted. Wow. There's a bunch of sci-fi that might get. Um, they haven't squeezed this enough, is it? I mean, I don't mind Re- reboot away, but just make sure that it's not. Because sometimes I realize that people reboot stuff hoping that it's got the fan base, oh. and they can just produce garbage and people will watch it. Oh right. That's what the last of uh, uh, Star. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Stargate. Uh, reboot was it was oh. apparently so terrible that I don't even think whether they made it past like two or three episodes. Oh wow! I, I could be wrong. I should I should look it up, but I'm too lazy. Okay. So extra is, hard. This work. is another thing about uh, sci-fi, right? Hmm. I find that sci-fi that goes back into the past does mm-hmm. not do well. So let's say you start. When you say go back into the past, as in in the show they yes. go back to a previous time. Yes, okay. correct. So I think this Stargate goes back to like 1960s. Oh. So it's like I don't care what happens in the night. It's it's again stop doing prequels for sci-fi. All right? right, prequels in sci-fi suck. There's never been a good prequel in sci-fi. Even in in fantasy, rare. Like I, I wouldn't say okay. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it's not better than the original. Usually, yeah, it's not better. Definitely not better than the original. Most yeah. likely going to suck. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's my little rant about that. So, yeah. What else have you watched? So, I've been watching... Actually, you remember I said about the glory, right? Yes. So, I found myself right. to be going on a sort of... Korean binge. Not Korean binge. Foreign film binge. Right now, I'm watching this French flick okay. uh, series called Black Butterfly about this writer okay. who gets hired by a guy mm-hmm. to write his story, his autobiography. Okay. But then in the first episode, he's like, 
okay, I tell you the story, blah, 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 and I kill the guy. <laughs> and then the guy, oh, wait, well, okay, okay. It's and a French film. It's a French uh, film. When, when is it, did it come out? I think, no, it's, it's a, a new, French new French show, series. Netflix. French shit. Oh, Netflix. Netflix okay. yeah. So it came out recently? As I, a new don't, film? I don't know if it's super show? new, but I've seen it in a while. I've seen it, seen it a couple of times, Black Butterfly. It's not like... 20 years ago 10 no, years no, ago no 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 oh you mean the setting no no as in like the show is oh not the show is not 20 years ago it's a, it's a pretty new sh- flick it looks okay, like okay okay yeah so this is a new one I don't know much about the story I just know that first episode I have just about to finish it but I watched watching this Japanese one called Sanctuary mm. about sumo okay and it's about this guy who at first I didn't quite like the character because he was like a bad boy rebel don't want to follow the sumo rules but right. I want to be the stronger sumo but then all the other sumo saying do your shiko right. oh I don't want to do this shiko bullshit I want to win my own turns but you know how eventually later he will learn to become a good sumo but very nice because you get to see like uh, all of this sumo stuff and what goes on behind the scenes and mm-hmm. and also you get to kind of see the Japanese people punya what's the word for it like how they re- act in society like uh, they okay. have these different levels of respect and okay. you can't do this and you can't do that and there's a little uh, there's a young girl who's a journalist from America she's also Japanese lah tapi she's she studied in America and so she came back with her new ideals and and you know um uh, not shackled to old different levels of, of people right. kind of thing everybody's equal that sort of stuff and how she deals with these older folks who come from a sumo world where no you know sumo is a you woman can't go into a sumo's ring or something right. because of whatever whatever so it's very interesting uh, in the end uh, the story doesn't give you like a yeah he made it and he became they just show that it's more about the progress of the guy. So is really. it like a hero's journey kind of thing? Where sort of, yeah. Uh, in it's a like way. a karate kid, but the sumo? Could it be something like hey, that? Hey, yeah. It's a karate kid, but sumo. Oh, hey, you go. See, I'm paying attention, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm paying yeah. attention. I decipher your story. Now, if I think about karate kid, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Although, they right. don't go all the way to the, hey, see I the want leg. the thing. Okay, It's right. like almost to the, you see the thing where he's already about to fight his uh, right. nemesis again, and right. they just... And then let you decide in oh, your Oh, what head. happened? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, okay. But it's really nice. Uh, okay. a, a bit great thing, though, that, 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 that beginning parts where the guy is still an asshole. Much of, okay. Why oh, you got to be such an asshole? Like, too <laughs> right, right, too jerk enough, off like enough, you. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Okay, okay. And you're kind of almost like, I'm not going to watch this anymore, but eh, so so interesting. Right, I right. I like it, I like it. So check it out, Sanctuary, if you want to find out more about okay. it. Okay. Very, very nice. All right. And uh, Dungeons & Dragons, have you seen it? Not yet. I do not know if I want to see it. Also because... One is it's got an American accent in it, okay. Which means then for me it just becomes like, wow, this, this is not a fantasy setting. This right. is this is like Las Vegas cosplaying or something. Right, I don't know. right. Okay. I don't know, but you watched it. Was I it watched good? it. Yes. So the thing is that um, did you see Dungeons and Dragons in the nineties? The animation. Oh yes, of course I did. It is kind of connected to that a little bit. Really? Yes. With the dungeon master and everything, it's somewhat connected to that a little bit. Oh, so a little bit of spoilers for okay. you guys. A little bit so connect. There's some kind of connection. Okay, uh. there's going to be a part in the movie where you're watching it and you're like, "Wait a minute!" Uh. <laughs> you're going to be like Leonardo DiCaprio in that meme. Oh, uh. you know I mean? yeah. So, okay. um, and the thing about the story that's okay, it's not like brilliant, mm. and there was a joke that was set up, which I'm like, this is going to come back in the end credits. Oh. And exactly what I predicted happened. Happened, right. Yeah. So, so there are some jokes which are funny. Okay. And it's meant to be an action comedy. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's meant to be an action comedy. So the wizard isn't like a, a really good wizard. He's like a bumbling wizard. Oh. He's trying to figure out his powers. And a lot of them were just not quite great. But like towards the end, they both kind of come back, come together. And there was an end battle scene where usually like magic battle scenes don't really look very good, but this one wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, the battle scene at the end was kind of it's it's it, I would think of Dungeons and Dragons is like a roller coaster on mm. a theme park, which mm. is kind of like 
lighthearted. There's some action in it. There's some humor in it. One dragon gonna come out or something like that. Yes, something like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there is. I mean, it's called Dungeons and Dragons. It and at be. some point, they are in a dungeon, and there is dragon spoilers. All right. <laughs> Wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> exactly, wouldn't have guessed, right? <laughs> but there is some parts which is so. Th- there are some parts which is like uh, f- it's funny, and then there's some parts which I feel like it's trying too hard. Oh. Yeah, but okay. um, overall, I thought it was not bad. It wasn't. It was. It was much better than expected. Right. Like I had okay. very low expectations whether this was going to be any good. Right. I think most people probably had low expectations. Yeah. Of this stupid yeah. Thing. It was, <laughs> it was very low expectations. So it was the fact that it was like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yes. So that's okay. Okay. As long as the dragons, I would, I would say, uh, watch it when you have nothing to do. Like you just like an off right. day, and you feel like. Hey, I get some pizza, you know, and just right. have something to eat. Turn off your brain. Turn off your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the dragons. That's it. Uh, okay, okay. The other one I watch is a uh, Bling Ring. Have you heard of it? Yes, I've been seeing this thing, but I I didn't know if I would want to watch it. Is it good? It's about a scam or something like that. So the Bling is a documentary and a movie. Okay, so this wait, there's two. There's two. Shows? Yes. So the documentary is the one that's released now on Netflix called The Bling Ring, right? Oh. In the documentary, they talk about the film, and it, and the film stars Emma Watson. So then I'm like, Emma Watson was in the film. I gotta download the film. The film came out. You in mean you gotta go watch the film? So I went and watched the film as well, right? So you don't have to watch the film, but it, it's better. If oh, you watch the film it. came out first. The film came out in 2014. Oh. So I watched the document. Oh. I watched the documentary halfway. I went and watched the film, and then I went back to the documentary, right? Um, so there's some parts which I don't quite connect. Like, who is this in this? This is the docu- person. Who is this in the documentary? Oh, the the film was based on the real story, lah. Yes, ah. correct. It's so it's an interesting premise. So what happened was this guy, he started to date this girl. And not sorry, he didn't date this girl. Mistaken. He's gay. He ah. befriended this girl, right? And this girl is apparently a delinquent. So she likes to go past cars and just see whether the door's locked or not. Oh. So every once in a while, she, she'll notice that, see, this car is not locked. She would go in and just take whatever she needs to take, right? So they used to just do that for fun. In fact, they would drive along, like there would be cars parked on the side of the road. Right. So they'd be in a car and she'd be on the passenger side and she'd go and just like pull the handles of each car to oh, see. Oh, the which, cars are parked on the side road like yes. this and she's just like... Cluck, cluck, cluck. Okay, yeah, okay, pull cluck, the cluck. handles all to make see which one is uh, unlocked and they would definitely be she said that it's always the expensive cars that are unlocked. Right. And she would go and get money, whatever, inside the car, or whatever they have. And there's one time they even stole the car itself because the key was in it. So the thing about these guys is they never actually took something that was, that was locked. Right. They right? didn't break in. They didn't technically break in, but right. they stole shit. Right. And then they got this idea that they think that celebrities also do not lock their houses. And it's true. Celebrities, apparently, a lot of them do not lock their houses. So they just walk out into like Hollywood and then... So they find out, because they, they know from TMZ where the celebrity is going to be at like right. some kind of whatever gala, Oscar party or whatever. Find out where their house is. Find out where their house is and go to the house. And they don't fucking lock their door. So their main target was Paris Hilton, right? They went to Paris Hilton's house and it was unlocked and they went into her house and then they started to take small, small stuff. And she had all kinds of designer purses and stuff like that there. All her purses were stuffed with like money money and like spending money, like random spending money. So they would take thousands of dollars. They stole her cocaine and then they said that it's like top grade cocaine or whatever. <laughs> it's like, they said it's some Scarface shit, you know. And then so they were snorting Paris Hilton's cocaine and spending her money and going wow. partying and stuff like that, right? And then um, they started to just, they went to Paris Hilton's house one time, it was locked. And then they said, let's check underneath the mat. And the key is underneath the mat. So then they have the key to the house and they could just duplicate access it. Lot, that they didn't even bother, I don't even think they bothered to duplicate it, they just kept the key. So they just kept going back to the house and they said that they treated Paris Hilton like their piggy bank. Right. Whenever they needed money, they would just go there and just take all the loose money that was there. And Paris Hilton apparently didn't even they didn't notice. didn't notice, right. Oh, so they were wow. doing this for a long time. And their problem was, that, as usual, right? Mm. When you're doing illegal shit like this, one of the things that you should not do... Is tweet about it. Is uh, back in the day, I don't know whether it was Twitter Oh, this yet. was back in the time. So you they, should not brag about it at least to yeah, people. So yeah, they were yeah. bragging about it to people and Stupid then that's how they got caught. Yeah. You got your money maker there and then you go and blab about it. Right. Yeah. Quiet, right. Yeah. 
And then, uh, so, so they got greedy, obviously. They got greedy. And then they started to, they wanted to impress people. They wanted to be cool with people, right? And then they started to steal more and more money. And then they went to different different houses and they would steal different ce- different celebrities. They even went to Orlando Bloom's uh, house. Wow. And his safe was unlocked. You know? <laughs> his wow. window was unlocked. They went into his window and then they went into his house. His safe was unlocked. And he had like a collection of designer watches, which... Looking at the watches, like I know watches could cost like two hundred thousand to half a million per watch, right. and he had about eight of those watches. Wow! In there. So and apparently in the movie they sold that watch collection for five thousand dollars. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure one of those watches is at least twenty thousand. You know? Right, right. But of course it's Stupidos. stolen stuff, so they just want to let go. You right. know? So, Hot stuff, right? Yeah. So that was the. Did they eventually get caught? Oh. Okay. Obviously, they got caught okay. because. Um, Otherwise, we wouldn't know the fucking story. Yeah, and the other thing is that two of the girls who were sort of involved in it, um, they had a reality TV show. Huh? Yes. So they were shooting a reality. Wait, TV they didn't show. go to jail? No, no, they had a reality TV show while they were doing this. Oh, oh, oh. So when oh, the cops they were actually much basically C grade artists, yes, C grade exactly, Hollywood artists. Exactly. Okay. So then. Um, when the police busted them it was on the reality TV show <laughs> and they couldn't get the correct shot so I think they reenacted some of the scenes with the police them, them getting busted this is the society we live in okay? <laughs> to get the views <laughs> to get the view. they already know they're going to go to jail <laughs> so let's at least get a good shot of it yes. oh my god. and goodness. then the reality TV show pivoted to like okay now this story is about these guys stealing the celebrity and their court case Yes. <laughs> so, so that's the th- that's the thing about this. It. Is all your you you people's fault? <laughs> you upvote this kind of shit. Yes. You subscribe to this kind of shit. They're gonna make more of this kind of shit. It, dude, man, honestly, right? It, you just think about it, like, right? This Kardashians, right? Oh wow! I, I I'm glad to say I've never watched a single second of that show. I, I've never watched it, but you know about them, you, right? Unfortunately, you like get shoved the in the face. With it. Yeah. So then, um, <laughs> famous they, for being famous. Famous for being famous, and like Kim Kardashian did like a sex tape and stuff like that, mm-hmm. right? And everybody, like you could see, says that they're a bunch of whores and whatever. I've never watched the show, right? But they're so rich, so rich and so famous, and they're so rich and so famous to the point that if you, uh, one of the Arsenal players, Saka, um, he was like FaceTiming with Kim Kardashian apparently, and he went viral. And then when he went for England training, all the English players were like, he doesn't want to talk to us anymore, man. He, he's FaceTiming with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> That's why they all talk about it. And you do it, even like locally. Like, so I'm having Bitcoin pizza day. I think by the time oh. this video comes out, it would have been over already. already but it's okay. happening on the... June the 3rd. June the 3rd. Uh, we're close to selling out. Oh, okay. Wow. Close to selling out already. Um, just yesterday, yesterday, right? I was, I was hanging out with the guys. Oh, uh, Arvin, uh, the, the crypto billis guy. guy, right? He got a phone call. Put on the phone. He said, "I just sold forty tickets." <laughs> Someone was like, "What?" He said, "Yes, he said, wow. I just sold forty tickets." They all we're already at like the the capacity is supposed to be like about five five hundred, because the place can accommodate about eight hundred, but we've got like stages and booths right. and, and the, tables uh, and stuff like that. Right? Or whatever yeah. nonsense. So probably about five hundred would be like close to max. Mm. We're already at four hundred something. He just wow. sold forty, so I think we're gonna touch five hundred very soon. Oh wow! So uh, we don't need to hype up the event. <laughs> it's going to be sold out, right? Yes. But <clears throat> there was a celebrity who is somewhat infamous in Malaysia. Uh, I'm not. You, oh, you think about it, I know if you already think, who. If you think about it, you'll know who it is, but I'm not going to say the name. Right, right, okay. right, right. So this celebrity wanted some money to appear at the event, and there wasn't in the budget, but not that we need to also, lah, right? But uh, another friend of mine worked in media. When I mentioned to him that this particular celebrity is coming, he's like, oh, if she comes, you're going to immediately sell out. Like, everybody's going to come just to want to see her. And I'm like, yeah, but that's the world we live in now, right? You get an infamous celebrity almost. An right? influencer, they call them nowadays. An influencer. Influencer, right? Yeah. And that place is going to be sold out. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So that's, that's it's, it's strange in a way, but I do kind of get it. No, this is what I, I, I get, right? I get immorality attracts attention. Mm. Totally understand that part, sure. right? Porn stars are super famous. What I don't get is when did society flip from. 
yes, let's embrace this. <laughs> like it used to be like, oh yes, I do like it, but I want to keep it on the down low. Now it's like, oh, why should I hide any of this? No, I fucking like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. So, yeah. Oh, this society we live in. Society we live in, man. It's the all about Insta society. It's all about. That's why, right? People say there's no such thing as bad press. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. get, you get, you're famous for doing something shitty. You're famous. You're famous, nonetheless. Man. Yeah. Kabilame, Kabilame. Is yeah, that his name? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's Lame or Lame. I'm not sure. Kabilame. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and and these people are now like bona fide celebrities. This is a yeah. this dude, Kyrul Aming. Have you heard of this Kyrul Aming no, guy? He no. makes. I think he makes like a. During Bulan Pasa, he will do the every day. He do a recipe and show you on Twitter or something. Okay, like. okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So he was doing a custard, which mm-hmm. he did out of um, Gordon Ramsay's book. Right. And then there's he. I think he shared that video. And then there's a video of Gordon Ramsay commenting on the video about right, what's up right. every second. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is different that. level already. Or this is like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordon Ramsay is a cool guy. He actually uh, interacts with. Did you see he's talking to Uncle Roger about uh, his his fried rice or something like oh, that? Oh no, I did not. He's even like, hi, Uncle Roger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but Gordon Ramsay is one of those yeah. uh, cooking people I like to I mean, chef people I like to watch shows of. Yeah, There's yeah. Some I just do not like. Uh, the thing is that his persona of being an asshole is specifically for his shows. It's for for American shows even yeah, specifically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not like that apparently in real. Right, not very right, like right, that. Right, like, yeah, maybe yeah. a little bit. I mean, it, his comments are funny. That's his thing. comments are funny. Yeah. The, yeah, if you watch the original, much of the British ones, what mm. it's more like sarcastic, yeah. witty stuff. But the angry, like getting mad at people, I think that's specifically for American audiences. Yeah, yeah. American people. Are I can't weird. remember one of the funny things that he said already. You know. I, I think he put two, two slices of bread in, be- in in the person's head in between. What is this? It's an idiot sandwich. <laughs> it's an idiot sandwich. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Oh, another guy yeah. I, I kind of miss is that Anthony Bourdain. That guy is fantastic. Oh, is, is that the guy who passed away already? Yeah, yeah. He suicide. Suicide, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that guy's shows are really good. Right, right. And and he's like a. A genuine good guy, like feels like you can you can feel his like mm-hmm. uh, his 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 excitement. You can feel his adventure, right? Not like some made up, overly made make up punya reality show. It feels like the real deal, right? Right? Anthony right? Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. No, a lot of these chefs are kind of kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, the girl ones as well. Yeah. I do hey, but did you know? Them. Did you know? Uh, the fall of Rome mm-hmm. also coincided with the time period where chefs were celebrated. Oh, okay. so they're saying that uh, this is this is the cycle uh, when people start to celebrate. You know, chefs. It's the fall and doom of society as we know it. Well, I guess if you think about it, right, that would mean that the height of um, sort of like that empire, right, is when you would. Emphasize more on luxury things. Yeah. Like oh yeah, food, right? it kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that would make sense. It's downhill from here. Mm-hmm. But I would say it's somewhat different because we don't live in a one empire world anymore. Anymore. There's so many different like empires that exist simultaneously, right? So if one goes down, another one will come up, well, yeah. right? There's just something that's going to take its place, right? I guess so. So yeah, and then like we're somewhat in between. So yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter. So, and I think food wise. Um, like we've got a lot of different uh, options now I guess so you know if you can't really get good American food you can get some good you know Malaysian food or Chinese food or whatever right <laughs> <laughs> I guess so yeah, yeah. though uh, I probably w- we'll see like you know I, as long as we're not underwater because of the melting ice caps and uh, yeah they said Maldives is supposed to be not here anymore but it's mm, still, here. still here what yeah. gifts yeah, yeah. Oh. oh dude have you heard about the whole Cleopatra thing Oh man! Right now it's the lowest rated yes. show on Netflix. It was wo- beating Velma. Uh, beating Velma, yes. <laughs> Velma, which used to be yeah. the, the, Velma, is the Scooby Doo remake, which right. everybody shat on. Everybody hated. Yeah. But this takes it to a whole new level because there's somebody right. who doesn't like when people talk about her. Right. Decided that Cleopatra was black when everybody's like, no. <laughs> 
she was yeah. of obvious uh, what's the Greek Macedonian yeah Greek, uh, Greek Mesopotamian Macedonian Macedonian Greek Macedonian descent which yeah. is as white as she eats. yeah so this is the the argument that they're saying right mm. while she is obviously of Greek Macedonian descent there is some ambiguity in like on her mother's side or something oh. like that we say that she could have been mixed with something right but this is the thing even if you couldn't be mixed with something why would you assume black yeah yeah you know what I mean? <laughs> why why not the ancient Egyptians they were of course ancient Egypt was very mm. multiracial right? right they were you know obvious Greek Macedonians you know, local Egyptians African Arabs, people, yeah, Arabs Nubians who were yeah, sub-Saharan yeah, Africa yeah, yeah. there were all of these people there right but why would you specifically assume black, black? You know, so uh, that's the thing that's strange. You know projecting what's the problem? much? No, I, you know what I think the, the root of this problem is, right? Mm. Is the classifications of race in America do not make sense. No, they do not. Because think about it, okay, the, classific- it's, it, the classifications of race in America are like Fast and Furious movies. None of them follow the same format. Because <laughs> <Okay? laughs> you've got Fast and Furious, and then you've got Too Fast, Too Furious. Then you've got mm. Fast and Furious, colon, Tokyo Drift. And then you've got The Fast and The Furious. Then you've got Fast Five. Like, none of this is the right, same format, right, right. you know? So the races are also the same thing. So you've got Caucasian, which is a race, technically. Then you've got African American, which is... Not a race. A continent and a nationality. Yes. Okay? And then this is the thing. Not everyone from Africa is black. Yeah. Africa is a huge continent. There are white people in Africa. Yeah. Granted, they're not from... Right, right. They're, yeah, they're, right. Their ancestry is not from there, right? Right, right, right. But Northern Africa, especially when you're close to the Mediterranean, right? Yeah. There are lots of Africans who are not black. Yeah. <laughs> Those enough. are Sub-Saharan Africans, right? Right. So... And then you've got Asian, which is like <laughs> Asian. What kind of Asian? What kind of Asian, right? <laughs> and then it, that, that's the thing. It's like we're back to like whole continent. Yeah. For them, Asian is like Honda. <laughs> yeah. No, man. You are very, very wrong. Yeah. And then you've got Middle Eastern and North African. So now right. it's like a part of Asia and a certain part of Africa. And then you've got, oh, not just Asian. They've got Asian slash Pacific Islander. Right. Punya Jao. So you're like, why Pacific Islander? Why not Atlantic Islander? <laughs> right, right. Why specifically Pacific Islander, you know? Because this is just a case of some Americans who I may or may not be stupid. Like looking, <laughs> looking at, okay, well, you know what? These Japanese look like these Chinese and they look like <laughs> these Vietnamese and they all look the same to and me. And they all Asian. And they all, so we're going to put them under Asian. But wait a minute, Filipinos don't really look like Vietnamese. <laughs> so what should we call them? Well, where are they located? They're located on an island, the Pacific. Pacific <laughs> Island. <laughs> That's what I think is happening yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. like, you, you can't go continent and then random, like, Random islands in an ocean. <laughs> How is that a thing? You know what? By that logic, you and me are Pacific Islanders. We're you know? Pacific Islanders. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Technically, technically. So, so then you've got uh, Latino. Right? Uh, right. So does that mean continent again? As in like Latin America? America? Or do would you include people from Spain and Portugal in that? Yeah, right. right? It's because if, if you're calling Asians Asian, Right? That means that Caucasian shouldn't be Caucasian. It should be European. European, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're going continent, go continent all the way, right? right, right, right. And I think the worst, okay, the worst is Native American. Oh, you know why? Why? Because it's a bunch of people <laughs> who are not Italian, right. named after an Italian guy. Re- oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Americo Vespucci. Americo Vespucci, yes. <laughs> so imagine you're not Italian, but your entire race is named after an Italian guy. Yeah. Your it's, races don't make any sense, America. Right. <laughs> right. They're native, not to America. America came way after. Yeah, they went way <laughs> after that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you know, maybe I'm guessing Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Filipino. These are all races. They're yeah. nationalities, and they're all races yeah. as well, right? Yeah. And you've got, you've got Navajo. Navajo I'm guessing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cherokee and, or whatever. And then you would you would have um, Brazilian, like a lot of nationalities are also races, mm-hmm. right? You need to have a big, bigger diversity. Yeah. Maybe if you want to say Arab, okay, that would make a little bit more sense. Right. But like Middle Eastern and North African, that's just strange. Mm-hmm. Strange, right, right? So your right. class, so that's I think that's the problem with Cleopatra, right? Right. 
they see African, Egypt in Africa, black. It must be black. Cannot yeah. be white. Like that, that's all they can right. process, right? That's, yeah. That doesn't make sense. Did you know that the, uh, I think the much of cultural ministry in Egypt, mm. uh, they're like, what the hell is it? And they're deciding to make their own Cleopatra where she's white. Right, right. Yeah, yeah this crazy lady. What's her name again? Jada Pinkett Jada Smith. Pinkett Smith. <laughs> she can't catch a break, can she? She ruins Will Smith. She ruins Cleopatra. <laughs> she's ruining she's just, everything. Oh, man. So, yeah. The, uh, also, the other thing about Cleopatra, right, is... Um, have you watched it though? Is it any I am good not, at all? I didn't bother watching it. Right? Yeah. Is that uh, a lot of people? Some, I mean, not a lot of people, but some people who are backing up Jada Pinkett Smith and what? they're saying that, oh yeah, no, it could be. This is uh, it because they the Egyptians called it blackwashing. Okay. Right, and then they said there's no such thing as blackwashing. What do you mean by there's no such thing as blackwashing? There's all kinds of washing: Asian washing, white washing, black washing. Sure, most of the time it's white washing, right? Right. When you've got Scarlett Johansson playing Ghost in the Shell, the Japanese character. Oh, sure. Okay, right, right. Most of the time it's whitewashing. But all kinds of washing exists. Right. Yeah, you sure. Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So, and I think they did like a meme where they showed like Elon Musk and it's like a black guy playing Elon Musk. <laughs> and then they had like cocoa, and then they said like cocaine, and then it was like coffee. And it was the bitch. Right, right, right. All the memes started to come Remi- It reminds me of this uh, one more meme I saw. Not to say right. meme, but somebody was saying on. Uh, uh, I think 4chan. They were saying, you've done um, Little Mermaid. Right. Black. And then, uh, what others? Yeah. Little Mermaid. Uh, got a few Tinkerbell, more. Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Bell. Right. And then they said, okay, I dare you. I dare you to do Tarzan. <laughs> Show me a black man growing up with gorillas. <laughs> 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 oh, and the world right. would go ape shit right, on that right, one. Right, right, right. So, yeah. The thing is, like, Tarzan and all of those guys, even uh, even Little Mermaid, they're all fictitious characters. So, yeah, they could yeah, be whatever. In fact, I, I think we even had this conversation where the Little Mermaid could have actually been black. Why not? Yeah, because the guy who wrote it was in, uh, he was like a Danish guy in the, the, da- the Danish colonies where the people there were apparently um, of color. Of color, right. I can't quite remember. So the author lived in some of the Danish colonies where the locals were of color, which means he could be imagining the locals as the mermaids, which could mean that Ariel is black. Right? Maybe, okay, fair enough. Potentially, right? But whatever it is, is a fictitious character. Right. And like they were even saying that th- there's some of the narratives, right, um, of the supporters of this uh, Jada Pinkett site, which is saying that the Africans are originally all black, but the Arabs invaded, and that's why Egypt is Arab now, oh. because of the e- Egyptians that invaded. The, I mean, the the Arabs oh, that invaded. Right. But that's not the case. You can mm-hmm. the, the thing about these ancient Egyptians is that they like to draw stuff on walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen that they, before. They kind of keep a historical record of yeah, things. Yeah, they have this nasty habit of like drawing and like keeping records and shit. Hieroglyphics. <laughs> yeah. And you can clearly see there that there's like this is what Egyptians look like, which is like a brown, and then there's what the Nubians look like, which is like a black. black yeah. So maybe the the ancient Egyptians weren't Arab potentially. But they weren't black either. Mm-hmm. So I think Egypt now is probably a mixture of like the Nubians, the ancient Egyptians, Arabs, and right. probably Europeans even, right? So there's like a, a large color palette that exists mm-hmm. in Egypt. But uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> the, the thing is that of all the p- characters that you had to choose, it had to be like the one <laughs> character. <laughs> so, and the fact that they need to push it through. And this is just another case of wokeism not working. Why not? Why let you do these stupid things, right? Yeah, like why? The left, I actually think, has a lot of good ideas. Hmm. But except that every once in a while they fuck up. (laughs) And when they fuck up, that's the problem with the left, okay? When the right fuck up, sometimes they kind of know to like go into their cave a little bit and hide, you know? Like, hey, let's not talk about this right now. (laughs) Thoughts and prayers, all right? Let's talk about this right now, right? But the left is like, what do you mean I'm wrong? You're the one who's racist. (laughs) So they just make it worse. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem right I was listening to this John Stewart interview mm. where he was talking to this guy about their, so in America I feel like it's probably not widespread it's probably not as bad as the media is making out to be because I don't I don't think so whatever we see in the media is always an exaggeration right, of whatever yeah, sure, reality sure. is right so um, he was talking to the guy and they were talking about drags reading storybooks for children. Have you heard about this? No, I have not. So in America, there are a lot of schools that are trying to push drag shows for like elementary school students 
And some of them apparently were like dancing on the pole and stuff like that. And school kids are like, wow, that's amazing. This guy with huge boobs is doing a pole dance. I don't know why this is relevant. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I must be homophobic or transphobic or dragphobic or whatever, right? But it just seems like, couldn't you get a clown? Like, <laughs> you're a magician or something. Why a guy in drag? I don't understand, right? So, and then uh, the guy was saying, it's not necessary, it's inappropriate, could be pot- uh, potentially promoting pedophilia, and LGBTQ uh, brainwashing or whatever, right? And the retort, he said, what about all the guns that are killing our students? Huh? You got nothing to say about that. Oh, and the guy was like, <sighs> <laughs> I guess you got me. So, but this is the thing, right? Both of those things are wrong, okay? Right, right. <laughs> Albeit maybe the guns thing is worse, you know? Because you're like, maybe I'm going to get a few questions from my kid when he comes back to school. Why was that man dressed like a woman, laddie? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, it's going to be a difficult conversation, but at least I have a kid to talk to, you know what right, I mean? Right. So one is worse than the other, but still both is really kind of weird. It's getting getting, getting pretty out there. There's a guy uh, recently, they, they said yeah. he is sort of doing a... Silent pro- protest in a way. Right, okay. What he's doing is he's showing up to school uh, where the bus stops yeah. every day, right. carrying an AR-15, which is now right. his right, right, his fundamental constitutional right. right. And people are just freaking out. Like kids are like, "Oh my God, there's a guy with a gun in front of the school." <laughs> right. That's not good news. So yeah, yeah apparently this guy is trying to. I, I guess he's trying to make a point. Mm. Sounds like people are listening. Yeah, yeah. But then again, he's anti gun. I think he's anti gun. He's right, just showing right. that this is really dumb. You can right. let me walk to the school with a gun, right. and nobody can stop him because right. it's his constitutional right. right. So he's trying to prove a point there. So hopefully something happens. But more than likely, it, it won't. Right. We, but yeah. but this, is, this is the thing, though, right? Uh, I watch a lot of those videos where it's like audit the audit and like police interaction kind of oh stuff. Oh my god, right? I haven't watched one in a while. <laughs> oh, those Why did you are, have to I remind me of these things? Yeah, addictive. Okay. Oh, so those shows, right? I find that there is a fundamental difference in what your constitutionally what your constitutional rights are and what the police perceive they can do. Oh, right. So those are two different things. Because there's so many arrests that have gone like off the chain when the police do things that they're not allowed to do. Right. When they overreact and stuff like that, right? So, yeah. and it's kind of like, I thought America was a place of, um, where like constitution and laws and mm. like that, you could just walk up to a school with an AK and like, uh, and then there's the other side, which is like you're taking videos and somewhere and the police and then are going to tase you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there's you take also too long to pull over, the police are going to pull you out of the car, taser you, taser you kick you in your head. Shoot you yeah. in the ribs probably. Yeah. And then find out that you're the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah. Bah, bah, bah. But seriously, scary, yo. Uh, I cannot imagine living in a place where I have to see people with guns. I just never mind taking them out. Ko ada pistol pun siapa macam mui takut to. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been in a in a van in KK, right? Mm. And I got into the bus mini at the time, right? Yeah. And this guy sitting opposite me had a bakakuk. Whoa, bakakuk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, that's a bakakuk. That's like a a homemade, <laughs> homemade. rifle yes. using wood and. Elastic and yeah. springs and things like that. It's basically. No, I think it's using gunpowder, man. And it uses gunpowder also. Uses gunpowder, yeah. It's just a, it's a homemade rifle. Rifle, yeah. And yeah. for some reason in Malaysia, in Sabah, it's allowed. Yeah. yeah. They use it for hog hunting and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think that um, it's not like uh, it's not it's not something that you can go into a school and kill a bunch of kids. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You probably shoot and. <laughs> <laughs> kau sudah kena tembak sana. Eh, kau nak kau kena turut kau kau kena tatak sudah ada tinggal dia tanya, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I can't imagine. Yeah, it's crazy lah. I mean, recently there's a couple. If I said recently there's been shooting, also it's like, how recently? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been reading a lot about these shootings recently. I think another one in a school. Uh, it blurs out, man. Yeah, it blurs out. There's one case that I read recently where this family went to the next door and said. Hey, your music is too loud. Turn they got it shot. down. And then he came back and murdered the entire family. Oh. <laughs> Took out his gun, killed all of them. Kids, grandparents, mm. everyone. So so I was watching another uh, sort of documentary about this on Vox right. just today about uh, why is it that every time there's a, a gun violence thing, uh, it doesn't necessarily make gun violence go, go lower. It's because... In those blue states, in the left-leaning states, they will uh, introduce much, um, okay, make it less mm. uh, 
easy to access mm. guns or something like that. But every time these kind of things happen in red states, mm -hmm. the reaction is to go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. It's like they're saying, we need more guns to stop these people with guns. Right, and, then, right. and then they'll throw in some stupid thing like this. This constitutional right, right thing mm -hmm. is a recent thing. They just yeah. added one state added it. And then now like 30 other states right. have the same legislation about to be pushed in to, to effect. Yeah. There was a good question that was posted by John Stewart, right? Which is if, if more guns means a safer America, right? Mm. How many guns is the tipping point where the thing stops? Right. Where the gun where the gun violence goes down? down. Right. Is it like what, five billion guns? Five. Everyone has two or Everybody three? Everybody has like five guns? Yeah. And then like the gun violence goes down after that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean if more guns makes things safer, right? It's like yeah, yeah. that is a good point, John Stewart. Yes. Probably, that is probably so why you're it's probably silly. why you're famous. Yeah. Yeah. So now they can do that. They can hold <laughs> guns anywhere. You certain people in schools mm. are allowed to have guns. Okay. Guns in a school. Right. <sighs> yeah, and uh, the thing is that certain people should have guns, like John Wick and the police and stuff mm. like that. Sure, John why Wick not? Was, right. Yeah. But not not like uh, deranged Frank from you know down from down yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah. And but then the they will, like they will say, like but then, what if the mafia comes after you with a the mafia is a criminal organization that's trying to make profit. <laughs> right. They're not trying to get caught by right. trying to waving around a gun and shooting yeah. you in the head. Yeah. They use guns for whatever criminal reasons yeah. that don't involve you and schools. <laughs> right, exactly. Crazy people come up to schools with guns for no reason. Yeah. So you don't, have, you don't have anything to worry about bad guys with guns. They know how to use it. They know when to use it. Yeah. No, I guarantee Malaysia would have a shit ton of gun violence hey, if, if, we had, if we allowed guns. Uish, go gila ka. Yeah. Every day on the road. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody is like, if they had a gun, right. oy, oy, yeah. oy, I cannot imagine or it'd be a bloodbath yeah. every yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so. Gila ka ka <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's one video of this guy who was shooting somebody in the freeway uh. through his dashboard. Oh, wow. Like he was shooting pop, 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 and he was like through his dashboard. He was shooting. <laughs> Nuts. But yeah, if Malaysians had guns, or Malaysians should not have guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would be really scared <laughs> because Malaysia exactly. you can walk around any is yeah. somewhere you salat mana orang sudah mau begadu. No, if Malaysia had guns, Fadil would be dead now. I would be dead already because there was one time he scared a security guard <laughs> and the security guard was like <laughs> he he locked his gun. What do you yeah. call that? He cocked it. He, he cocked, cocked it. the gun. Yeah, and he was about to shoot. Yeah, if it was in America, if I didn't I would have been dead. Shot. If yeah. I was in America, I would have been dead one hundred percent. I'm lucky this is Malaysia where people at least like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe he's just been an idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he's like, there's an idiot. But in America, he's, he's armed, he's dangerous. Yeah, yes, he's armed and dangerous. Shoot him. Oh, he's just an idiot. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. For here is the idiot comes first. Yeah, yeah. Most likely. <laughs> you see people something doing stupid? Yeah. Most likely he's an idiot. He was like he's an idiot. In fact, we were talking about this, right? right. If somebody was shooting an AK forty seven or an mm. AR fifteen somewhere, right? Mm. Our first reaction wouldn't be like, Who the hell is shooting a gun? We'd be like, Who is playing fireworks at this uh, time? Yeah. So hey, inconsiderate. What time is it? Really hey, got Chinese Chinese New Year over already, right? Uh, <laughs> Who's playing fireworks? Pop, pop, pop. Yeah. Because that's what it sounds like. It yeah, sounds yeah. like pop, pop, pop. Yeah. And then, yeah, we would be like, gee, look at yeah. no decency. We people. wouldn't even get out of bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd just be like complaining to, ah, oh, God damn it, these fucking neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> How many fireworks does he have, man? It's yeah. time to finish. So, yeah. But then in America, <laughs> motorcycle backfires, everybody ducking. Times Square clears out. Oh, yeah. shit. Right. Okay, last thing to talk about. What's that? On the list is Silo. Oh, Very this nice. is the sci-fi that you were talking sci -fi about. Sci-fi I was talking about, okay? Okay. It's about they live in this underground nuclear silo. Oh, a, a bunker. A, a, like, yeah, but it's like housed like, I think 5,000 people, 10,000 people, something like that. Okay. And this sounds like Fallout Shelter. Something like that. Yes, <laughs> like very much like Fallout. Uh, and there's so many different levels. Uh, I think, I, I can't remember exactly how many levels. It's based on a series of books, okay? Oh. And on levels, some levels they just have like cows and shit. Oh. So they've got beef, they've got electricity and wh whatever. They've right? got a full working society yeah, going right? on. And the story is told originally they, from different people's point Not of view. Not Netflix. Not Netflix, yes. Okay. Yeah. R is that other <laughs> network. R be that other <laughs> network. R. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's Apple TV. Right. So Apple's been producing a lot of good stuff. Severance. Oh, yeah, Severance is yeah, good. Severance I'm is good. So this is another season. good sci fi that they're producing. Okay, right? okay. 
So um, the story is being told by the, by the perspective originally from the sheriff, right? Mm. It kind of changes each episode, the perspective of the person. Okay. So it's about the outside world is contaminated. They don't know why, what happened outside. Like a lot of history is lost. Uh, because uh, I think like... Uh, and nobody uh, dares to go and find out, like, basically. Yeah, and it's, it's got to do with... There was some kind of like riot in the silo uh, a long time ago. And a lot of data was lost then. Oh. So they don't know what happens and never everybody's been living in the silo, right? And nobody dares go out. Okay. Yeah, but there's some kind of conspiracy going on that is like preventing... They, they don't want people to know what is happening outside. And there's a possibility... Wait, that, that means there are people who kind of know. Could be. Okay. Oh, I'm you, sure. you, you haven't seen... Finished, yeah. No, it's only episode three. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. Not to give any spoilers, right? Okay, okay. So there's some kind of conspiracy where the information is being suppressed, and maybe what everyone believes is the truth is actually a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's the dynamics that's happening in that silo. Dystopian that, future. Uh, yeah, kind of dystopian thing. future kind of thing. It is interesting. Um, so far, three episodes in. It's, Anybody we know in it? Uh, Sarah Ferguson. Oh, the Terminator guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> Terminator? <laughs> you mean Linda Hamilton? <laughs> no, I was thinking of a different Sarah. Sarah something, I can't remember. Sarah Connor? Oh, Sarah Connor, sorry. <laughs> Sarah Connor is the character, yeah, not the even character. the actress. <laughs> uh, Sarah Ferguson, she it was in uh, Mission Impossible. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's her name. Let me check. Uh, Sarah Ferguson, correct. Yeah, that's her name, should be. Uh, no, sorry, that's not her. That's the Duchess of York. <laughs> What is her Ferguson? Um, Rebecca Ferguson, uh, sorry. Rebecca. Rebecca Ferguson, yes. Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah. Eh? Jump around. I'm not Sundstrom. Is she Swedish? Yeah, she is Swedish. Yeah, yeah, Rebecca Ferguson. Some Sweden. And uh, she was in Mission Impossible. Mm. She was in uh, Dune. Oh. Yeah. Uh, something interesting about Sweden I just learned do, do you know the song Cotton Eye Joe yes where did you come from where did you go yeah. a long time ago it was made famous by a Swedish band oh seriously yeah I, all yeah. this one I thought some redneck from right, you right. know Alabama turns out it's a Sweden Swedish rock band called Macham Red Box or something like that yeah, so oh yeah. okay that's okay. weird so interesting the, the, that version that we all know of is from that Swedish band dude there's so much techno that's from Europe Oh yeah, yeah. yeah this is the birthplace of techno. Yeah, uh, from like early two thousands mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, there was this video where I, where I watched where they showed um, like uh, Gen Zs oh. like techno from the late nineties and early two thousands, and like ninety percent of it was um, like from Europe. Europe, yeah, yeah. I mean, Europe is huge for that. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Man, I went to kind of went to Amster uh, Amsterdam for my can't remember for my. Honeymoon, right? Yeah, uh, and then I we went to the clubs there. Well, they got they got clubs which do very very dashat mere techno ya kom macam we up up with your music. Right, right. Sit <laughs> <laughs> they go out. But they are into that stuff, that electro right. drum and bass and right. all the all the genres that you've never heard of. Ada tu, ada club lagi. Right, right. Oi, these people are really into that techno shit. I mean, you know that the, it even become a meme one of the songs. Whenever somebody asks, "What song is this?" and they'll always reply. They always give the fake title. You know, whenever somebody does like a song uh -huh. online, somebody will comment, "What song is this?" And uh -huh. the joke is always that song. Come on, never gonna give you up. No, 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 never gonna give you up. Is the Rick Roll thing? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. This is like what's the title of this song? Sandstorm. Yes, Darude. the Rude Sandstorm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Almost always the Rude Sandstorm. A any song is the Rude Sandstorm. Anything that's like a, a little <laughs> bit of techno. <laughs> The Rude Sandstorm. But that thing blew up, right? <laughs> yeah. What, what was that, like 90s kind of thing? I think it's 99, yeah. It came out like a long time but ago. But somehow, that thing, that song, The Rude Sandstorm, so iconic. Yeah. yeah. Until now. Yeah, yeah, it is. What the hell? Is. It became like a meme and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. A lot of the Gen Z's, when they're listening to the song, they're like, Oh, I know this song, but I didn't know that it was like famous, like I've heard of it, but I didn't know about it. Right. You know? It's so deep into meme culture, right. you know? that. They don't know what is the origin. They don't know what the initial joke was. Right. But they know of it. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's where we are in society. Man, I think we covered a lot of stuff today. Yes, we did. Can, we, can I see the list again? Uh, hold on. Let me just check the time first.
So this is one hour thirty six. That's not bad, man. That's pretty good. That's we a actually good gonna, roll. Yeah, and, and we actually talk a lot about movies today. I yeah, mean, TV yeah. and things. Oh, but this is entertainment, right? I also want to talk about That's the true. last thing. Okay. Tears of the Kingdom released last Friday. It's fantastic. Everybody go buy a Switch and buy yourself a Zelda oh, Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, okay. Oh my goodness, this game is fantastic. You know, I thought Breath of the Wild was the right. best game I've ever played. Right. This is even better. Okay. So, uh, in this game, uh, the story is that Ganon, who is the, always the penjahat in all the Zelda games, he has this gloom which deteriorates weapons until it's like mm. hanchur already. Okay. So because of that, there's no good weapon. So they've got a mechanic in this game which is absolutely fantastic. So you can fuse your weapon with things. Okay. And you can fuse it with almost anything. Like you go walk around and you see like, ah, oh, there's, a, there's a rock there. And you can fuse your sword to that rock and you've got a, like a rock sword. Okay. And you can fuse it, you fuse. You, in, the, in, the, in the previous Zelda, Breath of the Wild, you would go around collecting like food, like... Um, peppers and mm. you would get like some kind of fire jelly thing that you would maybe throw but now you can th pull out your arrow and you can put like uh, a fire related thing on it right and boom it's a fire arrow okay take out your arrow and then you fix a ice related thing it becomes a freezing arrow right and there's like a ton of stuff and you can even make like uh like vehicles you can put a, a, a log you can put some wheels on it you can put a wood on it and bam, you got a cart. Put a fan behind it, and then it moves. Okay, <laughs> like, okay. Kill a baby this game. Okay, okay. It's just, you're just, you're not even doing the story. You're just like, hey, what, you're, what is that? You're experimenting How does that with the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, I got this new thing. That, what do we do with this now? And then you can make a flame sword or whatever. Okay. This is amazing, man. Tears it's, of the Kingdom. It sounds a little bit like Final Fantasy VIII. Have you played it? Ah, oh, Materia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eight, it's got the materia. Almost, almost. Uh, that one, you put yeah. the materia in your slots, then the weapon has the, yes, the property. Yes. Yeah, sort of, sort of. So you've, you've got <coughs> the 99, if you've got like 99 of those orbs thing, mm -hmm. I remember that uh, in order to level up, right, you try to get the death orb. Because uh -huh. if you use the death orb and you throw it at a monster, it could randomly, um, like, the one monster, hit, the one, one, shot. one shot kill, right? Right, right? But if you get 99 of the death orbs and you infuse it into your weapon, Every time you slash, the, there's a chance he will just he one just shot. One shot. Die. Wow. Right. Yeah. So okay, okay. I don't people, would, that, people yeah. would do it for like flame, uh, death. But if you want to like level up, you would go to the dinosaur island with death, and then you just like T Rex one shot. T Rex terus mati. We buy that experience. Yeah, there's a lot of experience. Yeah, so it's like one shot kill the T Rex. You know. So that's that's what Final Fantasy VIII that came out a long, long time ago. Yeah. No, I thought you were going to troll me. Oh, why? Yeah, because Arsenal is going to... Arsenal bottled the league. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of Arsenal fans, right? They say, oh. Oh, we didn't bottle it. You know, like... Uh, this, this, we just uh, didn't quite go all the way. Um, that's what bottled that's it. <laughs> Justifications. <laughs> it's like we uh, we didn't lose. We just didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez! What happened? What happened? I thought it was like, no way you're gonna not make it. Okay, so um, the most likely explanation is mm. we don't have squad depth. Oh. Okay. okay. But um, there were some things that didn't go into our way. So okay, there's the okay. This is the likely, and then there's the excuses. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna give my excuses a little bit. Okay, okay. So excuses. One of the reason is the Queen died in the World Cup. Okay, so these two things. Uh, sure. When the Queen died, the Manchester City game got re re rerouted. Rescheduled, right? Football has a lot to do with psychology, right? right? So when we were top of the league at Christmas, we never played City yet. That mm -hmm. was bad. I would have preferred to have played City twice by Christmas. Right, already Rather, done and over with. Over and with, over and done with, right? Uh. Instead, we got two City to face them twice after Christmas. It's it's very bad, right? right? And the other thing is also City when they got Haaland, they needed some time to find like the balance right. to have him for, for the rest of the team. So at the beginning of the season, they were kind of fumbling a little bit. That would have been the perfect time to play them. Now you got a team who knows how to play with Haaland. Yes. Uh. So that was another problem. The second thing is that once you're winning, you're constantly winning, you don't want like a one month break for the World Cup. For sure, yeah. You know? But the other thing is also, uh, it does seem like this. Hey, World Cup happening this year, man? Happened last year, what? Hey, okay, okay, yeah, last in year. In December, yes. in December. Right, 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 you don't want right. that one month break, right? Correct. So the other thing is like, um, if you. Uh, oh, no, I lost my train of thought already. Um, but yeah, uh, we. 
We, we our squad depth was not quite there. Okay. Um, we had some injuries towards the end. We couldn't find a, a good replacement. Mm. Uh, psycho- psychologically, that was the that was the reason. Mm. Um, and oh, this is why I want the same. This year seems to be the year where the um, the great the the goats who were underperforming get what they want. Are you saying because MU is going up or something? No, no, no. So um, Messi, uh. for so long he's been trying to win the World Cup, never won the World Cup, finally won, won. right? Okay. Pep Guardiola, people say he's the greatest coach of all time, right. right? Never been able to win the Champions League with Man City. Man City have been trying for so many years. Oh, it's Man City this year. Yeah, so Man City versus Inter, I think, in the final. Uh-huh. So it looks like Man City is not just going to win; they're going to do a treble. They're going to win the Premier League, Champions, the League, Champions League, FA Cup, and the FA Cup. They're in. They're basically. They're first. Their first treble. Is it? Yes, their first treble. This will be their yeah, first treble. First champ. You never won Champions League before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is going to be their first Champions League. But uh, you know, like if you look at it, like City, they have the most expensive squad. They're being charged under 115 charges for financial fair play. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they have basically been mm-hmm. spending money that they shouldn't be spending, right? Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, the result of that case is probably going to take two or three years. So mm-hmm. whoever they're facing two or three years from now. They're going to get the advantage, right? Okay. This season is not going to count. At the moment, they're still feeling the most expensive team in the world. One billion. Oh. Yeah, one billion. It used to be uh, those Spanish fellas, right? Barcelona used to be the most expensive. Yeah. No, 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 not Real Barcelona. Madrid. Real. Yeah. Real. Num- is number two is uh, Bayern. Oh, okay. two, most oh, expensive oh, in the world. Oh, yeah, ba- one billion. The thing is, the difference though is that Bayern, they have hundreds of years of history, right? They got uh, over a hundred years of history, and they've got that fan base. So it makes sense. And like a lot of other leagues in the world, there's like one team that's super strong, super rich, and they just dominate the league right, nonstop, right? right? Ajax or and whatever. Sometimes there's like another team that comes out and surprises them, but most of the time, mm-hmm. Bayern just kind of like mm-hmm. dominate, um, you know, the league, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's not like the not like England. England kind of like constantly changes. So while I would say yes, we bottled it, um, and some things didn't go our way, like the World Cup and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff, but. Uh, we definitely did bottle it. The only difference is well, how do we react now? Because it is unlikely for us to win it in the first place. Even when we were leading by eight points, people were still like, "You're still going to lose it." <laughs> <laughs> And most Arsenal fans, also, I think, you would be hard pressed to find an Arsenal fan that said, "We're definitely going to win it." Right. But uh, the other thing is also history has taught you well. Yeah, we were kind of like trying to stay like oh, even if we don't win it, blah blah blah. You know, but we're secretly hoping that we do, of course, right? Right, obviously. And the other thing is that um, uh, Arsenal, um, when uh, they would be the first team that would win the league since Leicester that didn't get top four if they were to win it. So unlikely lah, unlikely for Arsenal to win it. But uh, it doesn't help that Man City have had s- s- always been like two games behind us. Mm. So even though we were leading the league for so long, Man City have had those games in hand, and Man City they are like a machine. Right. They have won, I think, like 15 games, 16 games straight, straight in the in wow. the in the Premier League or something like that. So they're like a they're like a machine, you know. So it's uh, who's second? Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal is second. As actually, te- mathematically, Arsenal can still win it, but it's just not likely. Uh, I, the problem with the, is the Brighton game. Oh, why? Because we lost to Brighton. Oh. If we had beaten Brighton, right? There's still a small chance yes. that Man City could fumble two games in the last four, mm. but they're not going to fumble three games. games. Right, right, you know what right, I mean? They're not going to fumble right. three games. Right. So yeah, that's uh, unlikely. Very, very unlikely. So uh, Man City definitely going to win. But the thing is that the you know what's the good thing about Man City winning? Do you know any Man City fans? Nope. <laughs> That's true. Don't any Malaysian Man City fans are likely former Chelsea fans. That's what I'm saying. That's what I always say. Probably. You know. Chelsea. So where is Chelsea now? Tidak sudah cerita. Chelsea, this is their worst season ever. Oh damn. Yeah, they almost got relegated. Oh wow. The but I think they're going to come back. But maybe like maybe two years, three years, they need to find some balance in their team mm. um, because they got a new owner now. Abramovich is because of the war in, in oh yeah yeah yeah. He, 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 yeah yeah I I think I read about yeah, that yeah, yeah. no more Russians yeah so only fools Russian <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So yeah, uh, I I guess that's the that's the situation here, lah. Um, All right. I think I think Arsenal's still gonna be there. Uh, maybe next year. Maybe next year. We'll see, we'll we'll see how we'll see how. But uh, it would be better if Man City. Uh, this is what this is what I think might happen, lah. Huh? My 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 jumpy jumpy, right? Mm. The financial fair play thing will come out next year that yeah, actually Man City likely is guilty. Strip them of all the things. No, no. Pep Guardiola will be like. Uh, oh, how could you do this to me? I didn't know that you guys lied to me, whatever. Because he already said it. If I found I'm being lied to, I'm going to leave. Okay, okay, right? okay, okay. And they might slap Man City with some like Fine. restrictions or oh. whatever. Like you cannot buy players for certain duration or your player cap salary cannot exceed this much. And Pep Guardiola will be like, fucking I'm outie. You're allowed yeah. to me. I'm going to yeah. go to another club. Yeah. I've won. I've won whatever. I don't need to prove anything to anyone anymore. <laughs> you know? I've won. And he'll yeah. leave. So and then know. Man City is going to then... Collapse, right? Uh, like not be as consistent as they did, uh, and then Liverpool's team is aging. Chelsea still rebuilding. Right, Man, right. Man United still rebuilding. Then it's a case of only Arsenal is like at that level where it could win the league. You know, all the one team collapsed. All the other things are still rebuilding. We've got like maybe one or two years before the other the others catch up. Right. I mean, oh, oh one more interesting mm. football story that I read recently. Yeah. Apparently Zlatan went to Galactica, is it? Los Angeles Galaxy. Oh, okay. You remember how, how when he came to Manchester United, he there was a big sign in the Manchester it says mm. Manchester, welcome to Zlatan, right? right, right. <laughs> this time yeah. he pulled out a huge like one page right, ad yeah. in the newspaper, it says Dear Los Angeles, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but wasn't this a long time ago? Maybe I don't know. I, don't, I just came saw, to Los I, Angeles a long time ago. Oh, man. maybe lah. I, I just saw this. I just saw this thing, and I was like, "Wow, that's a this is Zlatan like uh, uh, how it is." This has got to be like ten years ago, man. Oh, is it? I yeah, have no yeah, idea. Yeah, I have let no me, idea. Let me check. Um, when did he? Uh, Twenty eighteen. Okay, Twenty eighteen. Of five years. Because ago. I remember Jimmy Kimmel talking about it. Oh, okay. I don't I don't know. I I mean I don't I barely follow football, but I saw this thing, I was like, wow, this is this guy got like <laughs> oh, 2018. Yeah, ego yeah, yeah. the size of I don't know, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear Los Angeles, yeah. you're welcome. And then empty page yeah. and then the sign there. Slatan. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> this guy. If you had even an ounce of the confidence that this guy has. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Oh, he's playing for AC Milan now. Damn. Okay. Uh, um. What's his face? What's the What's the King James? King James. LeBron James. LeBron right. James signed a shirt, gave it to Zlatan. You know what Zlatan did? He signed and sent it back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. What a douche. <laughs> oh yeah. Lakers are in the conference finals right now. Oh yeah, guy. I hope they lose because of uh, what's his face, King James, yeah, LeBron yeah. James. Surprisingly, because Lakers had a horrible opening to the <laughs> season. Yeah, yeah. So right now, you know, I support three teams, right? Uh, Miami Heat. Yeah. Hey, no, sorry, Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal Hall, and what's the other one? Miami Heat, like correct. Oh, Miami Heat. Okay, yeah, sorry. You, you got it right. You got okay, it right. Yeah. See, so I'm not lying, right? <laughs> yeah. See, my buddy knows. Yeah, I've yeah. always, I've always been supporting these yeah, teams, right? Yeah. So right now. But how come you get Miami Heat and Golden State? Yeah. One is East, one is West. Uh, okay, and, okay, okay, okay. and you know why? You know why? Come on. Oh, because of Will Smith. Wait, wait. <laughs> Will Smith. No. He didn't play basketball. Miami Heat. But Dwayne Wade. No, no, because the same player. Same player. Who played for both teams? Hey, shit. I can't remember. In I, the okay, 90s, I, my favorite player. I know this guy. Time. I know this guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your favorite player was... Alama, I can't remember his name. But Tim? Every, Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. Yeah. yeah. Tim Hardaway, my favorite player of all time. So he played for Golden State. And he played for Miami and Heat. He played for Miami Oh, Heat. that's why. Okay, okay. So that's why I support both those yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. So, and one happened to be East, one is West. Oh, right? okay. So okay, Arsenal okay. to the out. Okay. So it's got to hard up. Golden, Golden State, State is out. out. So now the only one that left is Heat. Heat. They're still in the, are they're, they still in the Heat? They are in the Eastern Conference final. Hey, but apparently now there's a new format. It used to be top eight of East, top eight of West, correct? But mm. now, apparently, it's the top six of East, top six of West. The bottom two of the each have to do some kind of one-off game or some bullshit like that. I have you heard of this? I don't know. I, I don't just know heard of this on a different podcast, which is talking about Dota, but it's by a guy called Suns Fan. Okay. So every time he's talking about Dota, suddenly you're like, and now in basketball, and then he was talking about this. I was like, okay, I did not know that. I don't think so. 
No, try check. I don't know. He said there's a yeah. new new kind of format or something. Okay, NBA playoff. Like it's a one-off playoff kind of thing. I don't know what NBA playoff. Cause uh, I follow the yeah sixteen NBA playoffs. Blah 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 blah. Now, if two of, with the same conference are tied, then only this happens. Oh, 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 oh! It's it's a it's a special thing, yeah, It's, it's not like they changed it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Father Delio. You're uh, most welcome to the show. We're going to get uh, more guests coming on the show. Um, Do we know who is coming up next? I'm trying to see if I can get uh, Par One Danger Demarco. Par One Danger Demarco. Why be are you better recognized? Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. If he's free. Uh, if not, we'll find someone else. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Ciao. Bye. Bye.